45 years ago, a mask and a man changed the whole genre of horror as we venture through the entire Halloween franchise and rank them from our best to the absolute worst. So join us, won't you? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Dissect That Film podcast, where we dissect the good, the bad, and the ugly of your favorite films and film franchises. Today is a special, special day, because for one, it is Halloween. You are it Yes, is. it is true. You are listening to us on a Tuesday, because that's what day Halloween fell on. So you guys get a little bit of an episode a little earlier than usual, because yes, it is Halloween, and 45 years ago, Halloween... 1978 was released and so what better way to celebrate than by going through the entire franchise from halloween 1978 all the way to halloween ends we're going to look at each one individually talk about our what we like and what we don't like about them we're going to talk about our favorite masks we're going to be talking about our favorite final girl character whatever girl bro yeah because yeah it's not it's not always a girl there's a lot of it's gonna be fun it's not always a girl <laughs> <laughs> i am your host Brett parker joining me as always my wonderful co-host dan and angela of dna gaming hello 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 the funniest thing is that when we did our friday the 13th episode friday our freddy versus jason episode to be more specific uh you guys got mad at me because i didn't wear a <laughs> A Friday the 13th shirt because I don't own one and then today we're just all over the place I couldn't <laughs> I think, find my Halloween shirt and I, I don't own a Halloween shirt uh, D- Dan is wearing I think the same Friday the 13th shirt he wore on that Freddy vs. Jason episode and it's Angela I got. <laughs> and Angela is wearing her killer clowns from outer space yes. episode which you said where did you say you got that at Kohl's yeah no Marshall's oh yeah it's the same thing with a different name. Well, yeah, yeah but Kohl's is a little bit more expensive. Uh, put together. Like everything just looks like neater. Marshall's is just all thrown all over the place, and it's like go through the racks. Look at the racks. Yeah. <laughs> You'll find I what you're like, looking oh, for. I just happened to see it, and I was like, oh yes. It's, it's like one of those stores that has like surplus merchandise, and it's just in bins, and you just have to <laughs> dig through it to find it. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, it's like those God. those one uh, the big Goodwills. It's not yeah. Goodwill though, but it's like it's like Goodwill, and they have the huge bins, and it's like there's like shoes and stuff in it. Yeah. I'm like ah, I don't think I would be going through that. Dig Thanks, I don't want to dig through people's shoes. But then you shoes. like a needle in your hand, like oh no, with the herpes. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I just wanted shoes, and I ended up with <laughs> I ended up with this. Got a, got a sip of herpalades or something. <laughs> That's not mine. Uh-huh. That's. The instructor for some of my classes. That's his thing. Oh, oh Lord. I don't know what's happening here, guys, but uh, we're here. We're definitely, we're starting left field first. We're not oh, even making is... our way out there. Why do we, why, why why we start these episodes, you know, with some sort of order? I mean, it just, it doesn't make any sense. It would not be dissect that film without a just absolute chaotic beginning of an episode. What was that, Dan? It's two day. It's Tuesday bruise day. Yes. Bruise, well, Dan, Dan has a cool, uh, poop, tea. poop tea, and I just grabbed a a, a, a Miller Lite because I just was like, I, just ah. I didn't want to drink anything too heavy because I, you know, I gotta yeah. work and I don't like Same. doing that. So usually, you know, you just drink this. It's like drinking water. Um, <laughs> you know, she's fine. She goes to work blitzed all the time. So it's <laughs> not. <laughs> oh, my I keep God. telling them I'm gonna put I'm gonna put vodka in my coffee. They still They'll wouldn't never fire know. You. Mm-hmm. They still wouldn't fire you. They never know. <laughs> How would, how, would they know? They, how would they know? How would they know? So, Halloween, or the franchise as a whole, uh, it, it, you know, this is our this is our second time going through a entire franchise because last year we did the same thing with the Friday the Thirteenth uh, series, which 
looking back at that episode and re-listening to it, uh, there's some things I'd like to change about it, but I'm not going to talk about it here. Uh, we are going to be going through those movies individually as we hit f- other Friday the 13th. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we're going to eventually have a new ranking at some point. But this, I've learned from my, I, won't, I don't want to say mistakes, but I've learned from my cynical ways listening to that Friday the 13th episode. <laughs> I feel like I, I things, things might get heated in this episode, but I, I've got, I, I rewatched every single movie in the franchise again before coming into this episode. Uh, Dan and Angela did not follow the assignment, unfortunately. I'm going to throw them under the bus right here. They almost got there. (laughs) We had things happen this weekend. Or we would have watched them. It's like you guys knew about this for like two months. (laughs) Insert lame excuse here. (laughs) So the Halloween franchise. What is our history with this franchise, Dan? Oh, boy. Insert usual thing that I always say about horror franchises that I don't really watch growing up. But I actually think, I think I actually watched like Halloween three first. Wow. I think it's like one of the first ones I've seen. Okay. I think I, I may have watched because I think the first time I watched the, the, the first one is when we had that Halloween all those many moons ago. And we went to, the, we went, we went to Chad, <laughs> went to Chad's house. We watched a bunch of those horror movies together on Halloween. We watched uh, Halloween. We watched Critters. Yeah, it's, we went to Chad and whatever's house when we lived in Lincoln, but I think it was before Victor was born. It was right before, it was the year before Victor was born. I don't remember, I don't remember this. Yeah, it happened. But anyway. <laughs> I, I'll take, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. So that's, I, that's, I think when I watched the first one, but I watched three when it was on like AMC or something at some point. I was like, I've heard this movie shit. Let's watch it. You know? So that was, I think that may have been my first, like, I mean, I've seen clips of it. I think that may have been my first like full beginning to end proper introduction to the franchise. I don't I know what I've watched. I don't remember when I've watched it. I know I It doesn't I have to be like when you watch you know, just like what well, your like I don't remember the, the franchise. I don't remember his like he does. Uh I know I watched one and two and then I hadn't I didn't watch I don't think I'd watched any until I had seen clips of Resurrection. <laughs> because Resurrection. Just just some of the lines that are said in that one. Usually Busta Rhymes characters. Quick, say suck on the pipes. <laughs> That's all I can think of whenever people talk about Busta, man. Oh, jeez. And then, <laughs> then when we watched, you know, Halloween Kills and all those. The evil Rides Tonight. New- I forget about that one. All the the newer ish ones, like that's that was all I had ever seen. Like I didn't know until we started like really getting into the movies and stuff how many more there were. I was like, oh, there's a whole span of movies that I hadn't seen. And then we kind of quick watched a lot of them, and I was like, there's a reason <laughs> for that, <laughs> but. Yeah. I've learned to not appreciate um, what's Donald Pleasance screaming. <laughs> He's got a very specific way about it, and I'm just like... Oh, uh, yeah, as, as this franchise progresses and you get more psychotic Loomis and Donald Pleasance just yells a lot more. I mean, I like Donald Pleasance. I'm not shitting on him. He's a good actor. It's just there's That's just one quirk about him. I just don't I'm not fond of. Hey, that's okay. That's what opinions are for. <sighs> Tell people, and most people don't listen to it. <laughs> or they blast you for it online and try to can't. Ah, it. whatever. That's half the fun. Yeah. So this, fr- uh, the, you know, Halloween, uh, the, this franchise has been a thing for me since I was little. I think I probably saw the first one when I was probably way too young, you know, probably like five or six yeah. watching those that ghost titties, dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, probably seeing it on like, you know, via either renting it from, uh, the local mom and pop rental store that was by my dad, or it might've even been AMC. Cause I AMC used to literally run all of these movies. It was like, I mean, right now you could turn on AMC and there's probably a Halloween movie playing. 
and it was every one. And I just remember, you know, st- literally watching it from the first one all the way till at that time, you know, I think H2O was the latest one because I think uh, Resurrection comes out in 2002. Uh, so it was like late 90s, early 2000 AMC Fear Fest, just binging the Halloween franchise. And um, yeah, I I loved it. I, I think it was like a yearly thing for me, just going through and watching AMC and all that stuff and, and uh, really just falling in love with just how this there's not a lot going on in these movies if you really look into it like it's it's just michael going around killing people and then as 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 it gets but the thing is is as this franchise keeps going it 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 got a little bit more complex like they were adding like family aspects and they were adding you know tie-ins with michael and 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 all that stuff and it was just it was very interesting to see how they were going and yeah even the ones that people are people out on the internet will say or like bad i was still super interested just based on the stories that they were giving us even if they weren't like the most you know in-depth complex stories it was still really fun to see new characters and see new ways for michael to kill people which is weird to to say but that's just how it works when it comes to slashers you want to know how the how is the killer going to kill people in this movie is it going to be cool is it going to be like the last one or is it going to be lame and yeah, there's some some lame ones in there, but uh, it, yeah, this franchise is one of my favorite slasher franchises of all time. I actually enjoy this more than like Friday the Thirteenth. Um, I know, I know. I'm so sorry to all my Friday the Thirteenth fans. I don't dislike that franchise. It's just not one of my top slasher franchises. Jason is awesome, and I love a lot of his movies. But I, to be honest, I would rather watch. Uh, I would rather watch a lot of the Halloween movies than a lot of the. There's more good in the Halloween franchise to me than there is in the Friday the 13th franchise. But I'm not pitting these two guys together. It's just my opinion. Deal with it. All right. They need to fight. As we do. It'll be shit. We're going to be going through each movie individually, doing a short, like, plot synopsis, you know, nothing too in-depth like our normal episodes. And we are going to each talk about what we like about the movie and what we dislike about the movie, and then we're going to uh, rank them. And then, of course, as we go through, the rankings will change, and by the end, we're going to have our uh, solid dissect that film Halloween franchise rankings. So it's literally going to be just the basis of the entire show's rankings. So it's not Angela's individual ranking or mine or Dan's. It's a collective, as we did with Friday the 13th. Franchise. Yeah, and you'll still not. You know what? Half you still won't like it. Nope. But we appreciate. Don't worry. You. We'll still get crap for it, and I don't care because this is fun. All right. But can I say something before we start? Go for it. If they ever did Jason versus Michael Myers, I know exactly how it worked. They would get some random director that's never watched the franchise either <laughs> of them before, right? And they'll get writers, and the weakness for them will be Jason loves his mom. And family, he hates his but mom in that one, right? Michael does it because he tries to murder everybody, right? So, I don't know. Like, Jason doesn't mind hugs, but Michael doesn't, and I don't no. know where I was going with that, but it's something yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah, definitely did not enjoy Family Matters, that is for sure. <laughs> It's killed Jason's by the- like, turn that shit yeah. on. I love Family Matters. It's all about all that Days good stuff. Hair bears. Yes. It's got Shredder in it. <laughs> it does. Yeah, Family Matters. No. With Urkel, no. right? Fre- Fresh Prince. Oh, yeah, I got messed up. You're right. Yeah. I don't know. Uncle Phil was the voice of Shredder. That's yeah. right. I got my yeah. thing. It's okay. You're thinking. You were close. No, the I guy from Family it. Matters watched- was in Die Hard. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's a oh, Die Hard's a good movie. So, oh. to start this off... Of course, we have to go all the way back to the very beginning where uh, two writers, John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, sat down and wrote a movie that originally was going to be called The Babysitter Murders, but uh, it ended up being turned into Halloween. So we're going to talk about 1978's Halloween. But wasn't this an idea for a sequel to Black Christmas that never took off, and then John Carpenter just took the idea and made... So it was influenced by Black Christmas. I don't think it was supposed to be a sequel to it. Uh, this was just... But there was supposed to be a sequel to Black Christmas, but it didn't happen. 
and Carpenter, one of the writers, allegedly ran with the idea because what's his name didn't want to do it. That did Black Christmas the first time. I did not I see that, true. but that could be a true thing. I did not. I'm not going into super in depth facts on each of these movies. I'm just going to talk about them and the yeah. the, the most I can remember uh, on behind the scenes stuff with this. It's just we're just going through. We're going to talk about our just our thoughts on the movies and then rank them. So all I'm, just, all I'm saying is don't forget Black Christmas. No, Black Christmas is a fantastic slasher. It's actually one of like the OG slashers. Yeah, that kind of started out. the whole holiday. Yeah, because I mean, uh, it was Black Christmas and Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out in 1974. And then yeah, this... Like, oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. A lot, of people, a lot of people like to overlook and say it was Halloween. I'm just saying we need to remember those because Black oh. Christmas is a great fucking movie and it often is overlooked. You know what we also need to do? Well, let's rank the original theatrical posters for each one of these movies. Not... Oh, yeah, yeah. Not... Like any of the alternate posters, there's a fucking million posters for each one of these movies. We're going to look at the original theatrical posters and we're going to rank those as well. So I, we got a lot, we got a lot to talk about and a lot to rank. So this is going to be, sorry, I'll I'll stop holding it up. So Halloween was released October 25th, 1978, which literally almost released on Halloween day. That would have been great. I think that's, that should have been the thing. You call your movie Halloween. You should have tried to get it released on Halloween. It probably wasn't on whatever the normal release date for movies was back in 1978, but that would have been cool yep. anyways. Uh, it was directed by John Carpenter, who at that time, I think the he had directed, oh, let's see, in the 70s, uh, he had directed Dark Star, which was his first uh, film, which I think was written by Dan O'Bannon, who also was the man behind uh, Alien. He's the one who created alien and he's the guy behind return of the living dead which is a movie i can't wait to talk about on the show because that movie's oh, be amazing good. and he also did was- assault on precinct 13 which uh doesn't ever get talked about i feel like uh, if you uh, if anyone ever hears of that movie it i feel most people think of the remake which came out in the early 2000s uh, with Lawrence fishburne and uh i think ethan hawk was in that that's right but he's I want to see the yeah. original. I really want to see Assault. I've heard yeah. it's good. And so this was his third outing. He wrote this with Deborah Hill. And he got between $300,000 and $325,000 to make this movie. Which is, even in 1978, not a lot of money. Because there were movies at that time that were being made for in the millions. Uh, even Friday the 13th had a higher budget than this. Uh, two years later, and to be honest, I, in my opinion, I feel like this movie was better made, looks better. Yeah. So it ended up making seventy million dollars at the box office, and so of bucks. course, when uh, money is made of that stature compared to a budget so small, you know, sequels are coming. <laughs> oh, of course, it has to. It's a given. Yes. So, a lot of things people already know about this movie. This movie has been talked about to death. Of course, it is the 45th anniversary of of this film uh, as a few days ago. And there's a lot of things that I'll mention, even though people probably already know this. Of course, the iconic mask that Michael Myers wears, which thing is, is he is not called Michael Myers in, in the movie or in the credits. I think Loomis might actually say his name. I think he's the only person who actually says Michael Myers. And or he just calls him Michael, and but he's considered the shape. That's yes. how he is credited in a lot of the movies, even the ones where you know he's Michael Myers, of course. So the mask, of course, is a inverted William Shatner mask from uh, his. It was a Star Trek mask back in the seventies. Uh, uh, Tommy Lee Wallace, who was the man behind pretty much creating the mask and kind of making the mask what it is, pretty much grabbed it, flipped it inside out. Sprayed it, spray painted it white, colored the hair, and he got the mask. There you go. Uh, the shape himself was played by Nick Castle, who was just a friend of John Carpenter's. He was not an actor. He literally, John Carpenter was like, hey, I need you to be in my movie. I just need you to put this mask on and just walk around and just do what I need you to do. And he's like, Was it because he was okay. like just a tall enough guy for it? He's yeah, like, he just, he liked his stature. He liked how he looked. 
And uh, yeah, he just knew. He, like I said, he, they were friends uh, beforehand, so he, you know, he knew how he how he was. All of the costuming in this movie was all provided by the actors themselves. They did not have enough money for wardrobes, so they literally everything you see in the movie that the characters are wearing are their own clothes, which is pretty all funny. John Carpenter. Yeah, all the money was there. Of course, this was the movie that really put Jamie Lee Curtis on the map. Uh, of course, everyone knew that she was the daughter of Janet Lee, who, of course, is, you know, the iconic, you know, uh, she was iconic in Psycho. And then her father, of course, is Tony Curtis, who was a huge actor back in the uh, 40s and 50s, even through, I think, to like the 70s. And so, but she really wasn't like she hadn't done anything big. And to be honest, no one expected this to do anything. Nobody expected this to to do what it did. But. Uh, with the name change to Halloween, of course, when you you're you're titling your movie off of a holiday, especially a very popular holiday, and um, yeah, even just the, even when you look at the premise of the movie, it's just this dude escapes from a mental asylum and goes just kills random babysitters. Like he literally goes through and just kills random people, which was just the yeah. basis. That's that yeah, that's how crazy it is that that was the basis of the original Halloween. It was just this guy did not know who he was killing; he just wanted to go home. He like he Kills literally, he, dude. yeah. He literally lived in the same town. He just kind of runs into these people, and he's like, "I'm a serial killer," and just starts killing people. It's an equal opportunity. Killer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey. So Halloween, of course, uh, starts off with the movie or uh, with a six year old kid spying on his sister, who she gets oh, lucky. Him titties. Yeah, she she gets lucky upstairs, and he's like, "I don't like when my sister has sex," so she she stabs his sister. Kills her. You assume. Because <clears throat> he just kills what? her. I mean, he's yeah, he just kills her. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, you don't know the reason. I'm just adding that uh, <laughs> a little bit of history behind there. No one gets their dick, dick wet in this house. No. Nah. And he, the funniest thing about the beginning of this movie, it's a great, I love the opening of this movie. It's always fantastic. I love how it's always, it's in uh, first person. So you don't see Michael until he is outside the house and his parents show up. And the funniest thing about this movie is the fact that they sit on this shot for far too long because they are showing them. The parents look bored. They literally uncover Michael. They unmask him. And Michael, of course, is sitting like I like the the child actor actually does a a good job of just kind of standing there kind of like in shock as he's holding the bloody knife. Uh, the oh, let's see, can I find who played young Michael Myers? Uh, Will Sandon, uh, was the one who played young Michael Myers, and I like his performance. I like how he looked, but then the parents, literally, the mom puts her hands in her pocket and just stands there and stares at him, and they just hold on to that shot for way too long. But then we get the awesome title card with the yep. amazing music, which was also done by John Carpenter, and that theme it be- has become one of the most iconic. Not just horror themes, but themes in general. It's it. Yep. it it's, I've watched I, all thirteen. Actually, technically, I've watched fourteen Halloween movies in the last two weeks, and that theme is going to live in my head for a very, very long time. <laughs> I find myself humming it, not on purpose. <laughs> it's just, ah, it's so memorable and it's so great. It has to, it has to get out, dude. Me you have to hum it. at work. I was humming it, and it just shows how, you know inspirational and like how amazing John Carpenter is also I want to point out the fact that there's like little things uh, little Easter eggs that'll point to like things that John Carpenter would work on in the future of course like the movie that they're watching in uh, in the movie is the thing from another world which would then become the thing which he would direct in 1982 which another movie that he didn't get enough love for and yeah yeah and pretty much 15 years later, he breaks out of a mental asylum or a mental institution or a sanitarium, as they call it in the movie. And he goes to he steals this mat. Literally, the, the reason he has the mask is he goes to a local shop and he steals it. He just steals some coveralls and some and this mask. And now he is and Michael some, Myers. And some knives. And some knives. Yep. And some knives. I love the shots of him just driving around the town and no one notices him. Just a dude driving around in a mask. Just I love the fact that like Loomis, there's one shot where Loomis just doesn't look anywhere but forward. You know, like, turn, turn your head. He's over there. <laughs> and he's Loomis driving a state car. Look. 
Yeah. That should stand out. Uh, great, great scene where he's attacking Marion in the in the beginning. And of course, if you watch in HD, you notice the fact like when he breaks the window, he has a wrench in his hand, which is always a, oh, a yeah. great thing that you notice. Um, and the fact that like, how did Michael drive? How did has he know how to drive so well? And I, I love how I don't feel like I caught it as a kid, but as an adult watching it again, Loomis actually asks him that. Yeah. He asked the other doctor. He's like, how does he know how to drive? Well, someone must have taught him. <laughs> Yeah, because he drove out of there pretty damn well yeah. last night. He taught himself. Um, yeah, so he just goes on a killing rampage. He ends up stalking uh, Lori Strode and her friends and ends up killing them, all but Lori and the two kids that she is babysitting. And Loomis ends up shooting him six times! Six times, Sheriff! <laughs> nice. I think he goes on his screaming rant about six times. Doesn't he do that in the second movie? Yes, uh, two is when we start getting Screaming Loomis. So to go through the cast of this movie, we have Donald Pleasance as Dr. Samuel Loomis. He literally played this character for 17 years. He played this character up until he died. He died before the sixth movie came out. So I believe he, he's he got to be like in the top tier when it comes to like longest tenured actors in a single role. I would, yeah, up there for sure. You know, five movies over seventeen years. It's that's a that's a that's a career right there. Just that. I mean, of course, Donald Pleasance is well known for a lot of other things. I mean, he is literally his look in whatever James Bond movie it was. I'm not a James Bond. I I, I don't know all the James Bond movies, but he did play Blofeld in one of in a couple of them, and that was the inspiration behind Doctor Evil. His look as Blofeld was the inspiration for Mike Mike Myers, which is funny. He was the inspiration for Mike Myers' performance as Doctor Evil, which is pretty funny. How that all just—I just made that life is, real quick. Life is funny like that. Yeah, uh, we have Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode. She was 19 when this movie came out. Gross, pretty crazy. Uh, we have Nick Castle as the Shape when he is masked, but we have Tony Moran when he is unmasked that one single time. Be which is weird. I don't, I, I always got confused when I looked through that. I'm like, why didn't you just have, you have Nick Castle. Like, yeah, what's it matter? Like he doesn't like for two seconds. Yeah. And then of course, as I stated, we have Will Sandon as Mike Myers uh, at age six. We have PJ souls as Linda Vander clock. She literally plays the same exact character that she played in Carrie uh, two years before. <laughs> like she's the same character. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. We have Nancy. (laughs) Yeah. We have Nancy Loomis who plays Annie Brackett. She was 29 in this movie. That's a big bit of an age gap. And she will return in this franchise in a couple movies. Uh, We have Charles Cyphers as Sheriff Lee Brackett. He would return 40 years later to play uh, another version of the character who just. Yeah, we'll talk more about him later. We have Kyle Richards (laughs) as Lindsay Wallace. We have Brian Andrews as Tommy Doyle. Good Tommy Doyle. We have Nancy Stevens as Marion Chambers, and she's been in a few of the few of the movies as we'll talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sandy Johnson as Judith Myers, and yeah, that's and then we have Brent Le, LePage as Lonnie Elam. We see him once, so I figured I'll uh, talk about him. Bob. Oh yeah, we got where's Bob? Oh, Bob where's Sims Bob? was played by John Michael Graham. Yeah, poor Bob. Rip Bob. So yeah, so this um, let's talk about our what we liked about this movie and what we don't like about this movie. So let's start with I'm gonna start with Angela. Angela, yeah, what do you, you go first. so we're all gonna talk about what we like and then we'll all talk about what we don't like. So Angela, what do you like about Halloween 1978? So after watching what we've watched, there's a lot that I do like about this movie because it's it's the OG, mm-hmm. and I don't want to talk about what I don't like about the other movies. Just as, as opposed, no, I, no just as opposed to, I know as as opposed to this one, what made me like this, what I liked in this movie, I guess I should say, um, I love Jamie Lee Curtis, great actress. Every time I've seen her, in every, pretty much every role she's played, she's great. Um, I still do like the mask, just because I know how it came to be um i don't know i still like loomis i don't care if he does scream six times i don't dislike halloween halloween 
Loomis in this one is one of the better, is probably the best Loomis, in my opinion. Because he starts to, sl- like, as we see him through this franchise, he just slowly is losing his, he's just losing it completely. It's like, what happened? Yeah. Well, but it it's the fact that nobody really believes him. Like, he's trying to tell people that, hey, this is what happened. I know what's going to happen because I know him. But nobody, I feel like nobody believes him. They're just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. you're I think the you're problem, crazy, Dr. Loomis. I think the problem with Loomis that I noticed going through these movies again was the fact that he, the way he describes things is just so intense where it's just like, just yes. like, like he just, I think like it's, there's just so much. Yeah. He, he's worked with Michael since he was six years old. You know, he worked with yeah. him for those 15 years. So we knew all this information about him, but the way like the cop would be like, all right, who are we looking for? And he'd be like, all right, sheriff, let me tell you when I sat with that boy, I saw black eyes, the devil's so there eyes. I was. And I was like, I was like, dude, can you just describe the guy we're looking Hello. for? I don't need a fucking history lesson. Like, come on, it's man. It's this one telling a story. Yep. It's just, I, I feel like that's go. probably why yeah. people don't believe him because they're just like, oh, this because he just sounds like a yeah. rambling lunatic half the time. Here we go again. Like, oh, it's this crazy doctor. Like, Jesus. Yeah. Move on, but- old man. <laughs> So here, here I am. I'm like, well, we know, we know what's happening. They don't know what's happening. I'm like, why is nobody, you know, right? Like, yes, he's he he tells stories in, like toddlers tell stories. You know, they don't get straight to the point. They just kind of got a windy road, mm-hmm. like me. But yeah, <laughs> I, like without saying things about the other movies. For, for the way, the reasons know. that I like what what I like about this. No, so when we're doing this, just look at them as individual movies. I know. So when you're looking at what and like what you like and what you don't like, as we get farther in, yeah, we can look back at those other ones and be yeah. like, "All like, right, I'll, I like this." I can because, explain. Yeah, I can. It's ex- easier to do that. I can that. explain. Yeah, absolutely. Without Dan, of course. I don't think I would say much. Have much to say. You know, the cinematography is great. Uh, Castle playing Michael's good. The flow is good. There's some in, unintentional. There's at least one line that's unintentional humor. Was it for the Lonnie? Get your ass out of here. <laughs> I love it. Yes, Lonnie, love get your line. ass out of here. Like, and, and and I, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis is good. She is this. This is not her best perform, performance from the series. Of course, she's still young. Like she's right. she's got she's got learning and growing to do. But it, it's it's just it's just a good movie. There's, there's nothing that can be said that hasn't been said already about it. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I I'm just gonna bounce off what you're saying. Is it this movie is just to be honest, I even when you see like the flaws of the movie, and it's usually like production things, mm-hmm. I don't care. Like I just don't care. Like you know, the, I, and to be honest, I I never really see a lot of people who are just like I don't like Halloween because I saw the wrench in his hand when he smashed that window. Like no one talks about it because no one cares because like, it's enjoyable, it's right? Fun this to movie watch. It's engaging. This movie from beginning to end is just, it's almost perfect in a way. Like, this is almost a perfect movie. Like, just based on, like, you know, you get that awesome opening where you get to see Michael as a kid, you know, in the crime that will set everything up. And then seeing him, you know, and then it transitioning to him escaping the asylum. And then, and then of course, him going to Haddonfield and then being with the teenager. Like, everything just kind of flows together so perfectly You have John Carpenter's iconic music playing through the entire time. You have fun performances. There are, as when we get to the things we don't like, there are, of course, there are things I don't like in this movie, but I just feel everything just blends well together. You know, I, I, to be honest, I like the kid performances for, you know, uh, Kyle Richards and uh, who was the, who was the other kid? I can't remember his name. Well, you uh, Brian Andrews, who played Tommy Doyle, I Doyle. I thought, I thought their performances were fantastic. I liked the their um, relationship with Lori. Uh, I I like Kyle Richards' relationship with Annie, even though it's it's because it's funny. It's more of a com- it's more yeah. of a comical relationship. And yeah, I just I, it's almost a perfect movie. It just it, and it's not complex. It's straight to the point. 
I think Nick Castle as Michael Myers is fantastic. He's probably, I mean, I, I'll show my hand early. I think he's the one of the best Michael Myers in the franchise. Like he's just, he's the he's the one who started it all, and everyone kind of I feel just tried to be the way that Nick Castle was as Michael Myers. They tried to copy yeah. him. They tried to. They were very much influenced by his performance, and that's why they brought him back for that last for this last trilogy that we got to kind of, um, you know, don not just don the mask again, but to kind of help uh, make yeah. Michael Myers uh, that Michael Myers feel like it's the same Michael Myers from this one. Yeah, that makes so, sense. Yeah, it's it's um, I love this movie. <laughs> so now let's talk about the things we didn't like about Halloween 1978. Let's start with Dan. The whole movie. <laughs> we just talked about how much we love it and I was like ah psych we hate this movie I don't know what I could say I don't like about like I mean it's it it's just a really good solid put together movie and I'm not just trying to suck its dick because it's a classic and everybody loves it but it's just I'm just gonna tell you guys right now I am not high on the Halloween franchise I'm the opposite of Parker like Halloween is not a high. I'm not not big on the Halloween franchise. It's it's pretty low on my tier of bigger horror stuff in the '80s. But it's just it's too influential. There's too much going on with it. Like oh yeah, I mean obviously, but <laughs> there's too much going on that it's good. Like outside of like you mentioned, small production issues. I don't. I don't. I, it just it. It's such a nice little package. It just goes and it ends and. I mean, some of the acting wasn't perfect. I mean, wasn't that great? I mean, because there's, I mean, it was a cheap production and had the best people they could hire. I mean, what, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess well, there wasn't a lot of blood. Like, fuck, who gives a shit? It was shot well. And now I'm not one of those people that's like, when we talked about Hall, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre not long ago, that, you know, no offense to people who are. But dude, it's a fucking horror franchise. There should be blood in it. And the fact that there's not blood is a production thing or a stylistic choice. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. It's like I it's like if Steven Spielberg said, listen, I'm gonna make Saving Private Ryan, but there's gonna be no gore in it. Yeah. You'll look at me dead cool. in the face and say, You can't make any war movies after that that have violence or it's not the same fucking movie. Like, no, dude, that's not realistic. I'm sorry. It's a yeah. stylistic choice or a budget constraint or a production issue. Right. That's it. I'm just literally trying to find little bullshit. I don't think it has any major flaws or anything major. I don't like about it. Angela, um, there, there's a couple of scenes that were kind of unnecessary, with like the girl having to climb out of the window oh, in the Annie. <laughs> uh, yeah, in the laundry room. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, the butt. And that's the, what. Like, who needs that? It's par for the course. I, man. I That's get I it. You, this is your thing. I, I get it. I, I get it. But things like that, like you can definitely tell, like where you said that they had to wear their own clothes. You can kind of tell that some people weren't as well off as other people. So you could, some of them, some of the girls looked a little bit frumpy, as people say. And you know that they're supposed to be, like her her friends, they're supposed to be uh, not popular, but, you know. More well-to-do. More well-to-do. Mm-hmm. Look, they live that, nice that, that's just, just certain things that I notice. That when you have people that are like that, they kind of need to dress the part. Mm. But, like... Other, other than that, like, like the it was the whole. I think it was the whole back and forth in the house with Annie. Like, yeah. they could have shortened part of that. I'm just gonna. I'm and, gonna just hop in. Been... I'm just gonna hop in with you on this. No, just you're, like, you're... I, 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 Annie was one of my like. I, to be honest, not just Annie. I think her, uh, her friends, Lori's friends, just not a fan of them. I don't think. Yeah. Like they don't do a whole lot. Like I, it, I, I don't. I'm not. I, I don't. I don't I'm not gonna jump. I'm not gonna jump, Which, you know, forward to another movie where I actually like the characters more. But uh, yeah, I just they, you know, the the dialogue was it was just like, yeah, just I didn't care for them very much. Like, yeah, the whole thing in the laundry room, 
it's not, don't care. Like it just took too much time. I feel like it, they were just padding, padding the time because it is only an hour and a half. Yeah. And yeah, because they stretched that hole out because she kept doing stupid shit, and I'm like, why are you doing that? What did like, she get stop. on her butter? And she had like just strips naked in this kitchen. In the kitchen, like, <laughs> like she's sitting, and you just get naked in the kitchen. Yeah. Like, what? Where are you going with this? Yeah. Different times, I guess. Yeah. I get what they're getting at, but you know, it wasn't necessary. But other than that, like there wasn't really anything that I didn't care for. All right. Well, I said what I didn't like. The the main thing was probably just her friends. I wasn't a fan of Lori's friends. That's a, that's about it. I I really don't have any complaints uh, other than that. The kill I didn't mention in my likes. I like the the kills, even though they're. You know, there's not a whole lot of them. Uh, you know, I like the, you know, Bob's kill, of course, is most, like, I think iconic kill, even though it's, like, the most unrealistic thing ever. Because that's, it's 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 a great kill, though. Like, seeing him get nailed to the wall. And then, of course, yeah. you get the, uh, the head tilt from Michael for the first time. Uh, I'd never realized that it stays on him for a while. The fact where he does the tilt, like, three times he just keeps tilting his head back and forth he's just, he's he just does it like three, he does it like three times but yeah work, like it, it yeah that's that I, I feel like there's not a whole lot we can really uh talk about where that people don't haven't already heard about this movie uh it's fantastic and it currently is going to sit at number one because it's the first movie we've talked about so yeah. now we're going to move on to 1981's halloween 2 so halloween 2 was directed by Rick Rosenthal, who would come back to direct another movie in this franchise, but we're not going to say which one yet. He, uh, his last movie would be in uh, 2013. He did a, he's done a lot of TV stuff. Uh, Halloween Two is probably the movie that most people will know him for, uh, which was actually his first film. He, uh, this movie again was written by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. Uh, they did not want to do a sequel, uh, but the studio kind of pressured them into doing it. But, so John Carpenter said, I'll write it, but I'm not directing it. So he literally, I guess, sat in a room for a very short amount of time and whipped out a script for this. And we got, yeah, we got Halloween too. And pretty much the the plot of this movie is it takes place directly after the, the end of the first one where Lori is sent to, a, uh, to Haddonfield Memorial Hospital. And yeah, pretty much everything kind of happens at this hospital. She has to survive Michael Myers uh, once again, but in the confines. She's it's we're gonna see <laughs> this same scenario in a later Halloween movie, uh, yes. but this one, to be honest, plays a little bit less into like Lori actually doing anything other than like in the last like ten minutes of this movie. She does not do much in this movie at all. This is a Loomis yes. movie. Of course, this is this is where we start to get the more unhinged Loomis, where we first hear the, I shot him six times, Sheriff. I shot him six times. And he just keeps on repeating six yeah. times. Um, Take a drink every time he says six times. Oh, Don't it's it's do so it great, goodbye. though. It's so great every time you hear it. You're just like, oh, Loomis, you psycho. <laughs> it's so good. Good old Loomis. But... So John Carpenter, when he wrote this, he wrote it as an end. He wanted this to be the end of Michael Myers. And so when we get, of course, we get a lot of cool kills in this. I think the kills in this movie are pretty cool. Uh, we get like yeah. the the hot tub one uh, where the, the, the woman gets her, her face melted off in the hot tub. And then her like boyfriend there, Sonny Boy or Buddy, gets killed on, in the next room. Uh, There's a couple lame ones. Yeah, I like uh, Lance Guest, his character, Jimmy, who just passes out the driver's seat of a car. <laughs> and you're like, did he die? <laughs> Question mark. Lance Guest, we talked about him on the show before, way, way back, almost in the beginning of the show, when we talked about Jaws the Revenge, because he played Michael Brody. Um... Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. So Michael Myers was played by Dick Warlock, in this Whoa. version. Whoa! Yes. I wish I was a dick, Warlock. <laughs> so, yeah, Dick Warlock is stuntman 
primarily he would return to this franchise uh, pretty much in the very next movie that we're going to be talking about. This had a budget of $2.5 million, so a significant bump from that three hundred dollars to $350,000 that they got for the first one. And it made $25.5 million, so a significant decrease. Still made a good amount of change for its budget, but from 70 to 25.5, it's a pretty, pretty steep drop. This was released October 30th, 1981. Almost there again. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was this start. Of course, Jamie Lee Curtis comes back as Laurie Strode. We have Donald Pleasance back as Dr. Samuel Loomis. This is when you also get the subplot that Michael and Lori are brother and sister, which was weird. Yes. They just kind of plagued plagued this franchise for far too fucking long. They just kind of had to sew that one in there, attach it. Listen, do you know how many people I've talked to? And I was like, oh, dude, the 2018 Halloween reboot. You should watch it. It's, you know, a direct connection. It's a direct sequel to the first one. Blah, 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 blah. And then it'd be like, oh, he's, he's like chasing Lori around, chasing his sister around. It's like, no, because it's not his sister. I don't think <laughs> that far. And it just fucking drives me nuts. Because I had to mention it to my cousin and my mom and other people in my family. He's like, no, he's not. His sister is not mentioned in the first movie. Yeah, this was something that was written for this one. And but like I said, John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, they wrote this movie for it to be the end of Michael Myers. Like they John Carpenter had other plans for this franchise. And unfortunately, when we get to number three, it was the reason why his plan didn't go into come into fruition. And then we ended up getting Michael back <clears throat> to go through the rest of the cast. We have Charles Cyphers back as uh, Sheriff Lee Brackett, who literally uh, sees that his daughter was murdered and to be honest, does not show a whole lot of emotion. No. And then, um, yeah, he just kind of disappears. They end up kid- killing an innocent kid because he's wearing a Michael these cause he's wearing the same mask as Michael Ben Tramer. It's, yeah. Ben Tramer. Cause that's who Lori was supposed to be with. Yeah. He gets, fucked he gets distra- and they just leave him. They're just like, okay, we gotta go. <laughs> like let the fucker cook and poor Ben. Bye. We have Lance Guest as Jimmy. We have Pamela Susan Shoup as Nurse Karen Bailey. Hunter Von Leer as Deputy Gary Hunt. Tawny Moyer as Nurse Jill Franco. Uh, Nancy Stevens is back as Marion Chambers. Uh, in this one, uh, Adam Gunn plays the young Michael Myers in like that weird flashback scene where Laurie's yeah. visiting him when he's a kid. But also you get that weird scene where Laurie's... St- foster mom or her st- mrs strode is just like i'm not your mother and it's just like well that's just weird <laughs> I don't okay like, i don't like that we have leo rossi as bud scarlatti ford rainey as dr frederick mixter jeffrey kramer my boy jeffrey kramer he'd fucking hendrix from jaws oh yeah the only other thing I remember seeing him in is this. I was like, oh, shit, that's Hendrix. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's pretty much the, the, your core cast. Uh, we'll, we'll shout out Jack Verboys, who plays Ben Tramer, just for the fact that he gets fucked. <laughs> he dude, gets yes, kudos right. to that man, dude. But yeah, so the, the way that this movie goes is the fact that at the end of this movie, you get a whole bunch of just weird things the the whole brother sister thing you get the whole sam Haim thing that's kind of the thing that's like feeding michael's evil and then of course you get i mean to be honest the end of this movie is pretty badass though the fact where loomis and michael uh square off you get laurie shooting michael in the eyes you get the, the iconic look of the the blood coming down the eye holes and then of course loomis sacrificing himself to blow michael up and uh great even though there are shots where you can see that it was a stage, which is fantastic. Yeah. If you've ever seen this in HD or even 4k, uh, you see like the production walls. You can see behind the walls. It's great. It's oh, great. I love it. Okay. But uh, of course, great fire stunt of Michael yes. walking out of the room. And of course he, he falls and he dies. You see the fire melting the mask and you're like, and John Carpenter goes, this was the end. This was it's over. Michael Myers is done. So what did we think about Halloween two? Let's just talk about it. Let's not let's not go each person. Let's just talk okay. about what did we what what did we think of Halloween two? We're gonna just bounce off each other. It was more violent. 
Schreiber got fucked. We gotta mention that again because that's one of my favorite parts. But that dude just gets he just eats the biggest shit. Oh, uh, he is just and he, he, he looks terrified. He's like, what? He's like, they're like, stop! And of course, Loomis whips out his pistol, and Ben Drummer's like, he's oh, off the oh, fucking oh, deep and fuck, and then the cop just like, Wah! I didn't Bye. see him. What? Yeah. I did not fucking see him. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, hello. Oh, fantastic. Uh. I actually kind of like the hospital setting, to be honest. I didn't care much for Jimmy. His death was so dumb. I'm sorry. But that's the thing is you don't even know if he died. Did he die? I guess I there he, are like, two versions of it where I guess there is the version where he is actually dead, but then there's another one where he wakes up like he's actually alive and you get told he is. I don't know. It's weird. Who wrote this? I just didn't like <laughs> Who <Jimmy>? wrote this? <laughs> Period. I mean, he was fine with... with you know, Jamie Lee Curtis, and it's just like it was so unceremonious. Like he finds the dead nurse that was bled out, slips on his blood, cracks his fucking head open. I was like, Oh, that's serious? that was how he died, or and then he stumbles died. out into the fucking car and just on the right, yeah. he gives himself a essentially like brain damage and just <laughs> like, Okay, and Lori's like, Dude, stupid, do something, and he's just dead. On yeah, the wheel. he's, he's done. assuming dead on the wheel. Angela was shot him six times. In this Angela, movie. you can talk about like, what you didn't like about this movie. It's fine. We're not, no, we're not going in order anymore. It, it, not that I didn't like. There, There's just scenes I'm replaying in my head. Like, this is, it was good. Like, I mean, it. I'm just replaying the, yes, I know he slipped in blood and, you know, got a concussion. So unceremonious. But, but he's, like, he went with that. Oh, God, yeah, the, the stunt actor? Yeah. He fucking sold that shit. Mm. Like, you know he had to feel real great the next day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everything hit, like, all at the same time. And the uh, no. the nurse that gets lifted up with the... Oh, the with scalpel. the scalpel? Uh, I'm like, um, yes. excuse me? <laughs> like, you can do that? Like, this dude's got some... All, his upper body strength is unreal. He's got some triceps for days. He's got the power of Sam Ham. I'm sorry, Sam Ham. Sam Ham. How do you even say it? It's been said so many different ways. I like how this is Trick brought up. Treat said movie. it one way. Uh, they say it a different way. I've heard it said. I didn't even know it was supposed to be like. It's spelled this way, but you didn't pronounce it the way it's spelled. Like we're this. Are we? You know. Well, he pronounced it Sam Ham, right? Yeah. But like, I don't think it's. But that that's not how not we the way it. I've... it wasn't spelled. No, it's that's the way it's spelled. But I've heard it with the like the sh sound, and I'm like, I'm getting it. Oh, it could be Gaelic though. Yeah, I think that's what Dude, it is. Just true, but I'm like, where where are we getting this pronunciation from? I just like how we bring this up, and then in the next movie, it's just like they don't even. It's the same shit, but it's not the same shit. We'll we'll get it. Like, we'll it get into that one. So but yeah. Anyway, I, this movie, sorry. The fact I don't like the the brother sister thing, but I understand what John Carpenter was doing. He knew his original thought was, "I'm going to introduce this story point because he's it's just going to end it. You know, by the end of this movie, it doesn't matter. Like it's yeah. like it's over. But then, of course, when Michael comes back, we still get then we get more of it. That's when it's just like, ah, fuck! I wish they'd ever started with that. But oh, no. God. Yeah, so that's like my biggest gripe with this movie. To be honest, there are a lot of low moments of this uh, compared yes. to the first one where there's just moments of him yeah. just like nothing happening. Uh, but Dick Warlock, I thought was a guy. I, I like his performance as Michael Myers. I think he's I, I think the because he's got a very unique shaped head. So the mask forms very differently on his head compared to like every other Michael Myers in this franchise. Would so it's very it's unique. shaped. No, because that's disrespectful. And I think Dick Warlock's a uh, respectable guy. <laughs> he's listen, not having listen, a shape he can't help that he puts his fucking title as his name. Not all of us can be Dick Warlock. I... All of us are stuck at Dick Apprentice, and that's fine. We can accept that. Uh, cool, cool little fact, though, is in the movie, there's a scene where there's a boy with a boombox on his shoulder, and he runs into Michael. That was Dick Warlock's son. Really? Yeah. Well, there you go. Yep. Well, that was at night in the streets, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So, uh, yeah, I, yeah. 
I don't I don't think it flowed as good. Like it didn't no. flow as as as, as uh, seamlessly as the first one. Oh, buddy. Yeah, he kind of sucks. <laughs> He's all about the ass. All about that ass. Um, Got what was I good. agree. I think the conclusion is good, but I'm, it's interesting they brought. They almost re. They almost. Well, I mean, they literally did take the beginning of this movie and use it again in another Halloween sequel. Yeah. Which is, you know, I mean, obviously it was intentional, but yeah, I, I, I like the ending of it. I, I like the. I think the guy did Dick Warlock did a good job. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm tr I'm fucking don't do don't do this. I'm trying my hardest because his name means an entirely different concept in my mind. And I'm sure he's a wonderful dude. But does he he level up to Dick Wizard? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, it depends on how you tier warlock uh... and wizard that does. Um But no, like it, it, you get like you said, you get the first introduction of Crazy Loomis. I thought Jamie Lee Curtis's acting was better in this movie. She's had three years. Since the yeah, it's one. it's it's always She's funny when you make a movie where it's like a direct sequel, and it's yeah. been like, yeah, it was three years. So I was like, well, that's, that's pretty crazy. But no, yeah, I yeah. Brought this, hey, oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Oh no, I no, I agree. The Jamie Lee Curtis's performance uh, is a little bit crisper. Like it just, you know, yeah, seems like she's done uh, done other things since then. So, uh, but. When we get to the ranking, will sh will this one be above or below the first one? I like that they kept like the fact that she's had surgery and procedures done, so when she is up, she's like having the effects of the medicine, right? Which could have easily been overlooked by some some writers, but they kept that element in. I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's got some flaws. Like I said, the characters. I think the acting as a whole is better. Even like sh shitty characters like Buddy, and you know Loomis is ridiculous. But I, I, I don't know. You could tell they've had it's got more money behind it. Mm -hmm. This movie does. Yeah. Like the kid that ate ah it makes my teeth with the, hurt with the razor, the blade. razor blade. Oh ah. my god, that part gets me every time. I'm like, my what? Right now. What? How? Yeah. How the fuck did that happen? Was that the dude from Trick or Treat? He went to his house. Yeah. That's why you always yeah. check your candy. <laughs> yeah, right. That's all I got for this movie. All right. Well, uh, now let's rank them. Let's rank everything. So first, of course, is well, well, let's talk about the mask. Is the mask better in this one than in the first one? It's the same mask, by the way. But we'll talk about the look of the mask on the actor. Do we it like it? Him better. It doesn't look like it was just like thrown over his head and like floppy flopping around. I like that it looks more like used. it's like more form fitted. It's weathered. I know why it was looks weathered, but I I like how it looks like he's you know he's worn it for a little bit. It it's not like he just. You know, threw it on one day and like, hey, let's go. All right, I think it looks good. I, I, I really, I like both these masks. I don't know if which one I could pick over the other one, to be honest. Well, this is not uh, obviously this is not helping better. the ranking. It's not. I mean, probably this one looks better because of how it's shot. Because this one has obviously got a higher budget to it. They probably did some stuff to make it look better. I don't. I don't know. I'm just gonna go with the original one because it's a, the original. That's my All pick. Right. All right. So let's talk about. The final girl or final character of the movie is Lori in this one better than Lori in seventy eight. Yes, I think acting wise, yes. Uh, I can't, I can't, ah, I can't do it. Like she's not fleshed out as much as she is. I feel like Lori one. doesn't do a lot in this movie, and that's why I don't. I, I don't like. Yes, I can agree. I feel her perform. I'm not talking about her performance. I think just the what her character does, and her character does a lot in the first Halloween, the fact that she is like it, it, the whole sequence of her fighting off Michael in the house compared to just her running away from Michael in the, in the hospital and not really confronting him until the end where she shoots him. And, and plus, it just, yeah, plus, it just feels completely different. But you don't even have like her interactions with her friends and stuff that you get in yeah. the first one. You know, yeah, I, I think she's more fleshed out as a character in the first film. And this movie's just riding the coattails of it. Yeah. 
I think I think yeah, her performance is is really. I think it's good uh, for this, but I just feel like she's just not in it enough for me to justify putting her over uh, her, her character in the first one. I will. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I was waiting for something. I was like, <laughs> no, I was I'm, I'm just something. looking at. No, I have the photos from IMDb pulled up, like the screenshots from the the. I, I don't know, like her. I don't know. I, I'll I'll let you have it though. I won't fight it. <laughs> let me have it. I'll just say it's <clears throat> barely there. So our next ranking will be poster, the original theatrical poster, which, to be honest, I really like. The poster for Halloween 2, it's the the skull carved into the pumpkin. Uh, but man, that that first Halloween poster is just iconic. Yeah, it's it, just it, iconic. The, I like the first one because it looks really well and drawn. The second one just looks really, like it looks fine, but it looks, I don't know. I like, I, I like how simple it is. It's just a pumpkin, but it's got the skull carved in it. I think that's really yeah. cool. But just the way that design of that first poster, just the... The knives all forming into the pumpkin. <clears throat> Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. And so our final one is, of course, ranking the movie. Is it better than the first Halloween? No. Okay. Let's move it's on. Just, I think it's a good movie. But it's, it's good. It's just right, yeah. right there. Now, right in that. Yeah. I, yeah. Ass. To me, I don't think it's close. I think this one is no. it's far inferior to the first one. But. It's still an enjoyable movie. Uh, so we are going to be talking about the most, con- probably one of the most controversial uh, entries in the franchise because this was the first Halloween movie to not feature Michael Myers because of an idea John Carpenter had that it did not work out well for him. And that is 1982's Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. I always heard this was supposed to be an anthology show to begin so, with. So, yes, that was the idea. So, that was why John Carpenter killed off Michael in Halloween 2 because his idea was, okay, I want to make uh I want to make this an anthology series based around the holiday of Halloween. But I think the the biggest issue and the reason that this movie failed and the reason that that anthology series just ended up not going anywhere was the fact that we got two Halloween movies with Michael Myers beforehand. I think if you either started off with just Halloween and then moved on to Season of the Witch and 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 just pretty much like this is, you know, from and and kind of put it out there in the beginning that this is going to be an anthology series. I think it, that you probably would have seen a little bit more success because the the fact is, is in 1982, when people went into the theater to see this movie, they were expecting Michael Myers and they didn't get Michael Myers and people didn't like it. And to be honest, even me as a kid watching, going through the series, I've seen season of the witch a lot. I was the same way. I was kind of like, you know, you'd watch those first two Halloweens and you get to season of the witch and you're just like, is Michael in this movie? Like, <laughs> Where's he at? He is. And then he shows up on a TV and you're like, what is what is going on? What is going on? What? But now rewatching it as an adult or even rewatching it, you know, I've seen this movie plenty of times, you know, in my adult years, uh, where I've been able to appreciate what he was trying to do and what uh, you know, what Tommy Lee Wallace and what John Carpenter's idea of this. I would have loved to see more of a movies like this, but unfortunately it just wasn't the planning wasn't done right. And Thanks, general public. Yeah. How dare you? So Halloween three season of the witch was directed by Tommy Lee Wallace. And of course he was an editor for the first Halloween. He was also, of course we mentioned the fact that he is the man behind the creation of Michael Myers mask. Uh, he would later on go to on to direct uh, the It miniseries in 1990. Mm. Uh, it was also written by Tom and Lee Wallace. It was produced by Deborah Hill and John Carpenter. It stars Tom Atkins, Stacey Nelkin, Dan O'Hurley, <laughs> Michael Curry, and Ralph Strait. And also, it stars uh, Nancy Keys. Her, so her last name was Nancy Loomis when uh, she played Annie. In the first Halloween, she would play okay. Linda Chalice. She played 
uh, Dr. Chalice's ex-wife in this one. And all they did was color her hair a little gray and put her in the most old lady outfit ever. And are like, yeah, she, I mean, she was, I think when this movie came out, she was in her early thirties, but it was like the fact that we have to make sure that she looks old enough to have children with Tom Atkins, who at that time was probably in his forties. I'm guessing we looked this up. We looked as he was in his forties. I'm pretty sure because we talked yeah. about this shit in this movie. But the, the funniest thing is that they do that, and then he goes off and like sleeps with uh, that Ellie character, who at the time, to 23, I think was yeah. yeah. Like what? <laughs> Dude, oh. he, he's just there to eat some titty. That's what it's, he was there. For. Oh yeah, he ate all that titty with his Tom with Atkins. his actual like, wife at the time in the next room. <laughs> Laying pussy, Tom uh, uh, Dean Cundy, <clears throat> who we did not mention, who was the cinematographer on the first two Halloweens, he would come back and be the cinematographer for this one as well. Uh, Dean Cundy has been the cinematographer on some iconic films, such as like Jurassic Park, for instance. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, Back to the Future trilogy, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, The Thing. The minor movies. I yeah, The Fog, you know, just just these these big movies, you know. But I, uh, of course, and this was also, I forgot to mention the fact that Dilo De, De Laurentiis, who was like a big time B movie producer, like he was a guy who literally yeah. would just, he would, he would go on to produce a lot of bigger movies down the road, but he picked up Halloween two and then kind of stayed on for a little bit as they went on. But, uh, we also have to, I, we also have to mention Mustafa Akkad who is like mm -hmm. one of the tent poles of the Halloween franchise because he is the man who kind of was, he controlled what happened with this franchise. And he's the one who ultimately brings Michael back. He's the one who pretty much comes with up with all the rules uh, with Michael and all that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get back to Michael's uh, series. So yeah. Halloween three season of the witch. Kids all over America want silver shamrock masks for Halloween. So Dr. Daniel Chalice seeks to uncover a plot by silver shamrock owner Connell Cochran. That's what I'm going to do for the rest of these movies. I'm just going to read IMDb's plot. A <laughs> little Please bleep do. there. Yeah. And then we're just going to talk about what we like and what we don't like about this movie. <laughs> Eight more days till Halloween. Eight more days till Halloween. 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 Eight more days till Halloween. Silver Shamrock. <laughs> How can you not have that stuck in your head when you watch this? So, Halloween three. What do we think? Um, good. No, you should say. You should say. You should say things. At least one or two things, before you get flustered. I didn't know what this movie was about going into this. I told you it was different. You said it was different. <laughs> I said it was different. I was, I was different expecting Michael Myers. Damn it. That's as not my as fault. was everyone else. <laughs> And I, I, we keep going and going. I'm like, is he going to show up? And you're like, there he is. And it's just on a TV in a bar. And I'm like, is that, <laughs> that's all I get? You like, get twice. Like, what the hell? <sighs> yeah, but. There's the TV and the scene in the bar. And there's another scene in one of the other rooms. You get to see more clips of. Oh, yeah. Across the street. Yep. Yep, yep. I can't say that I don't like this movie. I just don't feel like it was Halloween movie. But like, I said to Parker earlier, I don't, I think it was, from what I've heard, it was considered to be an anthology before the second movie was even made. It was supposed to be an anthology. That was that. Carpenter's that, idea. When he was writing Halloween 2, that was his idea. It's like, I want this to be an anthology series, so I want, that's why I need to kill Michael. Like, well, this is going to be the I, end of Michael's story, and now we can move on to another Halloween story. Okay, see, I just thought it was prior to the second <laughs> one even existing, like even being written. He's like, from the first one, it's going to be an I mean, it could have been. I mean, I, I haven't I really looked that deep into it, but... Uh... And I could we'll gladly be wrong. I just don't know. Well, I guess what really threw me off is the first two movies are consecutive. You like, you get the second one ends or begins where the first one ends. So yeah, I'm, like, right. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you, you think he's dead, which he's, I guess, supposed to be dead, but he's not. 
He got it's like better. Jason. Yeah, he got better. You know, he he just brushed it off and, you know, he's back. It's the man behind the mask. He is the man behind the mask. Dang he's, it. I was getting he's there. Not, it's Jason, but that's fine. He is a man behind <laughs> a mask. But, but, yeah, like, I guess I was just thrown off. Did it make me like the movie? I, I liked it as a movie. I just thought it should not have been a Halloween movie. I get it. No, I 100% get it. Because I, like I said, I think that's how most people felt about this movie. Is you know, because I think the the Halloween title it was connected to Michael Myers. It wasn't just you know, yeah. no one knew the idea that Carpenter had, and mm-hmm. I'm glad. I, I mean, it, it's great to see that it's gotten it's got a cult following now, and I think a lot more people like it. And a lot more people have it like on top of their lists of, of this franchise. And I can understand why I have a lot of fun with this movie now uh, compared to when I was a kid. Cause I was I, <clears throat> being a kid. I was just like you, you know, just like, well, where's Michael Myers? I want Michael Myers. Yeah. I want him to do that. Like what is going on right now? I want you know, him to I wasn't a little killing <clears throat> thing. <laughs> you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't totally on board with it, but watching it as an adult and, and kind of understanding what the, you know, and reading a lot of behind the scenes stuff and understanding the movie now, I can appreciate it a lot more. I I love the whole mystery solving thing. The fact that there's this like town that is run by this toy maker who, uh, if this town is literally controlled by this company, by the silver shamrock and Connell Cochran, who is summoning magic from one of the stones that he just somehow stole from stone. Yeah. Like, how did you do that, buddy? He's got an army. He's an ar- he's, he's literally a toy maker with an army of clockwork soldiers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I love the kills in this movie. Yeah. I think uh, uh, Dick Warlock has possibly the coolest. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, I gotta get you I every can't time. Help I can't help it. I'm sorry. Every time. So Dick Warlock plays like <laughs> probably the most prominent android in the movie. Uh, he he gets the awesome kill where he literally just it rips the dude's head off. In, yeah. the, in the scrapyard, it's yes. awesome. The kills in this movie are great. The kill yeah. in the hospital bed where he just shoves his finger the 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 android who eventually goes and blows himself up in the yeah. parking lot where he like just shoves his fingers into the dude's eyes and just like ah, yeah, <laughs> it's you great. That hurts. And just lights uh, himself up. Yeah, the the masks are fun. I like the silver shamrock mask. The I song do does get annoying it's after a while. Annoying. I I don't get me wrong. That jingle is great. But when you hear it 25 times in the matter of like 45 seconds, you're like, <gasps> you start to go a little mad. You're just a little crazy. But then, you know, it gets to Halloween Day and they're like, happy, right. happy Halloween. Like, oh, they changed the lyrics a little <laughs> bit. It's right. I like, the, I like the lady that dies in the roof of the misfire. So that was school. Tom Atkins' wife at the time. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then the um, the kid whose head melts in the mask. Oh, so good. Yeah. Shit. Dude, yeah so the, I think, like I said, I probably show more love for this movie because it was one of my first Halloween films that I watched. And I knew that this was not Michael Myers. And I knew that this was the one that everybody fucking hated because mm-hmm. it wasn't him. And I was like, I'm going to go in with an open mind and just watch it and see if I can enjoy it. And I did. I, I like Tom Atkins. Um, his, you know, the lady sidekick was fine. I like the villain dude was cool. Uh, the, the mysticism Stonehenge thing was kind of weird with all the computer stuff, but I mean, that was kind of the big thing at the time was computers and how they were going to change everybody's life and all that shit. And, uh, like, I like the, like the, the clockwork soldier thing was cool because you get Mm -hmm. the, the, the actual German, like the woman that's made, that's kind of clockwork. That's doing the knitting on the rocking chair. And that's kind of like, you're like, oh, that's what these are, but they're just computerized versions. Right, that, that was like an early model. It reminds me of, yeah. of Westworld, because that's yeah, kind of yeah. a, a, a thing that you, you see in the original Westworld movie, also in the in the show itself, yeah. where it's like, you have your newer models, but then, you know, you have the, the it always reminds me of the scene where Anthony Hopkins is in, uh, he goes into the room and he's talking to one of like the earliest models of the androids that are in the park. It was like an old, like, uh, Billy the Kid style one is yeah. very robotic like unlike the newer ones that are supposed to be humans and yeah I think it's and really like, cool 
I like the connections to I don't know the actual traditions behind the starting of Halloween, but like how was the children that were supposed to pay and that was the ultimate thing that he was trying to do and and uh honestly the the you know spoiler alert for an old ass movie what was this 80 82 82 yeah uh so yeah it literally came back to back after the second one okay um but like the the you know oh god downer of an ending like the you know the whether he he's trying to trying to contact his kids yeah yeah, well, well, you know, he's trying to contact the news network to turn it off. Yeah, to he turn gets it the off. first two channels yeah. off, but not the third one off before it airs. Yeah. And, like, did his kids die? Like, how many kids die from him? And, like, that kind of, mm. like, you don't know ending, kind of like the first Halloween, where they look out the window and Michael's gone. Right. So, like, it, it's it kind of had that vibe to it. And, you know, Tom Atkins, like, yelling into the phone, even though we listened to, uh, and he could have just been fucking about, but we listened, we watched uh, Into the Darkness Part 2. Yeah. And Tom Atkins is like, in my mind... I succeeded yeah. and saved all the children, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is great to hear that from Tom Atkins. But uh, I, his, his performance in this movie is great. I, dude, I wasn't a fan. A- I wasn't a fan of his uh, the relationship they give him. Yeah, with, like, Ellie. It's like yeah. it's weird, but you know, if it's the early eighties, and you could, they made this man off as a womanizer. You know, dude, he's, he's over there. Hound. He's over there <laughs> slapping like nurses' asses while he's at work and. You know, and, and the coroner, he's got, he's like dicking down the coroner too. Yeah, he's you're like, like trying to get a hold of the whole movie. Yeah, and then you have a shitty ex-wife. And to be honest, oh. I don't like her at all. You know, clearly, like he's a doctor, so he's a very busy man. He's got, you know, doing, you know, what doctors do, and she's just like, you gotta go to work again. Never see oh, yeah, the kids, point. and it's like, um, yeah, I, yeah, it's my job. Like, what do you want me to quit my job, not make money, and then not pay child support? The problem is, the problem is, is he was doing what a doctor was doing, and he was fucking the nurses instead of fucking his wife like he should have been. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Is, I mean, I don't know is. what the, the, the whole thing was for the divorce, but I just don't like, I don't like how they made that character just kind of the, I don't know. I don't want to say generic, because I feel like there probably are people out there that act like that, and, then, and you know, once divorces happen or splits happen. No, and I agree. And I, I think I think ultimately, even his character, like as much as I like him, like he's doing this case to find out what's going on. But he's, which he's not a detective. He's a fucking yeah, doctor, I, and he's. Uh, yeah. I get it's part of the movie, but he's also like putting off shit with his kids. And I'm like, yeah. think from my perspective, I would not want to put shit off with my kids. Right. So yeah, he's doing yeah. something that he doesn't have to do. Like I don't understand why he, he's only doing it because. I, is he only doing it because he wants to? sleep with her <laughs> like mayhap i think yeah. it's a little bit of that it's a it's, weird thing I think man. he wants to know because the dude right. laid himself up and just fucking outside of his hospital yeah it's a it's this movie is dead it's a fun one i i enjoy yes. this one now uh better understanding it and able to enjoy it more yeah. so uh, i forgot to mention this movie was released october 22nd 1982 with a 4.6 million dollar budget and made 14.4 million dollars at the box office and uh ultimately with the reason why uh in our next installment we get the return of the man with the mask yeah so, that makes sense mm-hmm. I'm saying, um, listen, it happened to jason one time he yeah. was a fucking ambulance driver so you know what happens uh music again was done by john carpenter also alan howarth was uh Ooh. helped with the music i love the credits the opening yes credits. they're great with the, the oh. like tv uh, crt tv like yeah like the digitized pumpkin. yeah oh yeah, i love really it cool. it's so really fucking cool. 80s it's great so i i love dan uh Herlihy, who plays uh connell cochran he also mm. plays oh, the, the character that just is called old man in robocop yeah. <laughs> oh just further establishes that i want to fucking watch the Pro- robocop franchise yeah, robocop is amazing uh yeah he he's great i love the fact that it, we get like a willy wonka scene where they invite like the top selling guy who <laughs> with his family yeah. and then he ends up killing the kid and you're like oh my god that's a willy if that's a torn from willy wonka i don't know what it is <laughs> off all of them yeah it's, it's fantastic like, it's but fantastic. this was more brutal offing than you know oh yeah yeah, yeah it's like, snakes and spiders coming out of the kid yeah this felt like a Twilight Zone episode, like an extended Twilight Zone episode or 
uh, a ta- or I would say like Tales from the Crypt or even um, Tales of the Dark Side. Like this is a creep show. Yeah, yeah creep, creep show. show. This is an extended version of you, you could expect a, a, a story like this coming from a show like that. Um, but yeah, I understand why people don't like this because of the fact this doesn't feel like a Halloween movie, but watching it now, I, I definitely appreciate it a lot more. So let's do our rankings on this one so we can move on. Let's talk about masks. So we're going to talk about the three masks that are used in this movie. We have the pumpkin, we have the witch, and we have the skeleton mask. As a collective, are those masks better than the mask from Halloween 2? No. All right. Well, there we go. Because I like the masks. Like, if I seen those masks, I would know they were from Halloween 3. But right. They're not, they're not the, they're not Michael right. Myers. It's just not the same thing. They're just over here. They're just over here. Don't worry though, ladies and gentlemen, worry, I right? feel these masks will not be last on our list because there are far worse masks oh. in this franchise. All right. Final girl slash person. Oh, <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, Dr. Chalice, Tom Atkins character. Is he better than Lori in Halloween two? No. <laughs> okay. Angela? I, I like his character, no. but right. no. All right. So he is now the new number three. Uh put chalice. All right. Poster. I I I'm gonna already say it's number three. I d- yeah, it's the poster is fine. Right. I think the poster's cool. I like the whole bad. the witch, uh the I like the mask and it kind of like floats into like the, the logo and then you got the three kids walking. But it's kind of like a screenshot, and it just yeah. it just doesn't feel. I don't know, not not a, not the biggest fan. Uh, yep. And then, of course, the movie itself is Halloween three: Season of the Witch better than Halloween two. I'm gonna I'm gonna hop in. I'm gonna say yes. I like That's this. Movie. I, I if I if I'm somebody were to, this if somebody were to put these uh, Halloween two and Halloween three in their hands, say take one. I'm taking Halloween three because I have more fun watching that movie. It is fun. I enjoy watching it. So I'd say if that... I watched it again, I probably would enjoy it more. But the fact that I was like, "What the hell?" So yes, Dan was that I a yes? Better than two. Yes. Okay. All right. On to number. It's four. not better than Halloween one, guys. Don't worry. We don't even have to touch, no. t- t- no. touch that one. It's no. okay. <laughs> All right. We are now on to Halloween four: The Return of Michael Myers. Halloween. Four, the Return of Michael Myers was directed by Dwight H. Little. Ooh, Little. Who would go on to do it's Free Willy Wizard. 2. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Anaconda's The Hunt oh. for the Blood Orchid. And a movie I actually just watched uh, not too long ago, about a month ago, called Natty Knox, which actually brought back Danielle Harris, uh, which was fun. It had Danielle Harris, Bill Mosley, and uh, Robert Englund. Oh, uh, it was okay. It wasn't. It wasn't great, but it was. Um, it was cool to see this director's name again. Uh, it was written by Alan McElroy, uh, Danny Lipsius, Larry Ratner, and Benjamin Ruffner. Heard none of those names before. No. It would. This would bring back Donald Pleasance as our favorite doctor, Doctor Samuel Loomis, six times. Every time, just about you know what though he doesn't come back. Six times. Uh, Ellie Cornell and my favorite character of the movie, of course, Daniel Harris is Jamie Lloyd. Uh, Ellie Cornell plays Rachel, who is kind of our co-final girl in this movie, along with uh, Jamie. We have two actors playing Michael Myers in this movie. We have Tom Morga and George P. Wilbur. We have uh, Sasha Jensen as Brady. I want to shout him out because I just watched Dazed and Confused, and I was like, "His ca- he's in that movie," and I went, "I recognize this guy." And then rewatching these movies, I see him in that. I was like, "Ah, that's where I know you from." He hmm. plays Brady, who's a shitty character. It's been a while since I've seen Dazed and Confused. So. Uh, yeah, that there's really not a whole. I'm looking through this actor. I'm looking through this list, this cast list. I'm like, eh. we have Kathleen Kentmont who plays Kelly. She's the one who, who uh, I can't remember what the shirt she wears. <laughs> the, the cop shirt she wears because her dad's the sheriff. 
Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Cops the one do that it by the book. cops do it by the book. Yeah, because he, 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 she's the one who bangs Brady after. He, yes, he, he just he, he, because because uh, Rachel decides that uh, she's going to watch Jamie, or no, she gets forced to yeah. watch Jamie because her parents take her yeah. take her uh, uh, trick or treating. Yeah. So Halloween four, the return of Michael Myers. Ten years after his original massacre, the invalid Michael Myers awakens on Halloween Eve and returns to Haddonfield to kill his seven-year-old niece. Can Dr. Loomis stop him? No, because we're going to get many more movies after this. <laughs> this is fucking movies. Return of oh, diminishing man. enjoyment. Is so this movie... <laughs> uh, we have Alan Holworth back to do the music. Uh, John Carpenter. We Of course, we get his theme, so he gets credited for that, but he does not come back to do the music until uh, later, way later in the franchise. Uh, this movie was released October 21st, 1988. It runs at 88 minutes. Uh, these movies, for the next like three or four movies, actually, I think even through Resurrection, these movies get short. Like they are less than an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, it had a budget of $5 million and it made $17.8 million. All right. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about yes, Halloween let's 4. Talk about it. So, what do we think about Halloween 4? Uh, I like Rachel. I do too. She's I like Jamie. Good, final girl. Um, I like her as an actress. I don't like what happens to her in these movies. I I like her in this one. When we get to five and six, we'll talk about yes, how the character kind of just doesn't get written well. But I like her introduction into the franchise. I like. I kind of like the fact that, of course, they couldn't get J- like Jamie Lee Curtis didn't want to come back to the franchise at this point. Uh. Just well, because of the sheer fact that she was told it was done, like the the whole thing was done, so the fact they bring back the franchise, they bring back Michael Myers, which is what everybody wanted, and they couldn't get Jamie Lee Curtis, and it'd just be weird to recast her because I feel like Jamie Lee Curtis is is Laurie Strode. Yes, and so they're like, well, let's come up with an idea of what if she had a daughter. And she dies. She just dies off screen. She dies in a car accident, I think, in this in this what is called now the Thorn trilogy, which this movie really doesn't play too much into the no. Thorn um, stuff, which is which makes me enjoy this movie a lot more. But uh, I, I I like it. I like the fact that I just love anytime they show pictures of Lori, it's always just screenshots from like the first movie. Yes. Up, or like it was her sitting on the wall with the pumpkin. It was like was there someone there with a camera that I didn't see? <laughs> Dude, it's, hilarious. it's the, like you said, I like, ja- uh, was it Jamie Lloyd? Is that her name? That character's name. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I like her as an actor. I think she's a good kid actor. The thing I don't like about this one and the next one, it's just all the bullshit she has to go through. And it's this kid constantly crying through most of these fucking movies and getting shit on. And I don't fucking like that. Mm hmm. That's going to be my biggest problem with the next two movies. Yeah, uh, I like I like the the com- I like the relationship between Jamie and Rachel and then everybody else just kind of is just pointless and useless. Like yeah. I li- and this is when we start even getting worse Loomis. Like Loomis is starting yes. to lose it even more to the point where he starts to get annoying. Like it starts to get to the point yes. where it's like I don't like watching him on screen cuz it's just like, "Oh my god." And to be honest, he's not the worst in this one. It just gets worse as we if one once we get to five, it's a whole other animal. But you know the whole. I do like the whole. You know when Michael, you know, waking up from his coma because like he's been in a coma for uh, the last ten years. Yeah. I like how it plays into the fact that like, uh, oh, I thought he died. He I thought he died ten years ago because that was the end of Halloween two. No, he him and Loomis because Loomis was supposed to be dead too. Yes. But he you, just gets like minor burns, and his burn changes every time you see him. Dude, holy shit! I thought I was the only person that noticed that. I was like, "Why yeah. the fuck is it different?" It's this like weird disc burn where it looks like a CD was burned on his face, and then the next yeah, like one, it like, like it's just a normal burn. Uh, it's, it, it's yeah, it's on the other side. Yeah, of his they face. couldn't consistently get the same <laughs> makeup job done. <laughs> but uh, I do like I do like the opening of this movie. I like the fact of Michael escaping, you know, killing the ambulance, uh, everybody in the yeah. ambulance, and then him uh, Loomis showing up and finding him at the the gas station 
with the you know he doesn't even have his mask yet. It's just the bandages. Yeah, yeah. Which is weird because it's like it's been ten years. Why would he still have bandages on? I'm like, all right, I don't, I don't know. That's a great question. And <clears throat> yeah, I think I think he's brutal in this movie too. I think Michael has a lot of cool kills. And I, you know, you got the the one with uh, the girl, the one with the, the cop shirt on where she gets like, you know, again, we get the, the cool like nail to the wall shot. You know, the cop who's sitting in the chair who she's like trying to talk to, but he's ended up he's actually dead. And yeah, it, it's really this movie, in my opinion, is way better than I was expecting going into another rewatch. Because I, I do remember as a kid enjoying these movies. Um, and four definitely was my favorite out of the Thorn trilogy. I, you know, just seeing Michael back was always a blast. And him and Loomis going at it is is fun. And him having like a an adversary in a child, like the, the to see like the chase scenes and everything is really cool. But then there are just some boneheaded scenes like I like the fact that the town comes together and they like Like band up. They like, yeah, Yeah. they like band up. They're all at the bar, which another movie in this franchise will kind of copy it in a way, but they all band together. They go out, they kill, just kill a random guy who they think you said it was Michael Myers. He's like, I thought it was, but he just killed a random dude in a bush. And then you have like four people who are all dressed up as Michael Myers to play pranks on the cops when they're looking for a serial killer who wears the same costume. Smart. Bro, you that's when you deserve. That's what like if if you got shot, you you were asking for it. Like yeah. that's just dumb. Oh man. So stupid. <laughs> Very. And uh the ending of this movie is fucking awesome. I love it. Whole fucking everybody's there and they just blast him into this well. Yes. Oh. Yeah, and then of course like his because I don't know if there was an idea for a sequel to this, but Michael was supposed to die. And that's when you get the whole thing where the, his like evil transfers over to Jamie and she ends up, I guess the original idea was to kill the mom, but then you find out in five that she's not dead. So it's this whole thing, but uh, yes. overall I, I thought this movie was fun. I, I had a good time with it. Uh, the one thing I will mention though, the fact the mask not a mm-hmm. fan of the masks in the Thorn trilogy. Why is mm-hmm. it so white? It's so I mean it's the fact that he just takes it from a shop. Like it's not going to be the same mask. He just steals it from a from a shop. So it's but it's it's very white, but it's also very wide on the bottom. But he yeah. tucks he tucks it in he also tucks it into his uh coveralls. And it just and it, it and it's like this. He has like no neck, and it's just weird. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I can't remember if it's this one or if it's part five where there's a shot where the mask has blonde hair, and it's uh, I don't pink. Remember. But I guess the reason behind that was because they couldn't yeah. they couldn't find the actual mask to use it, and they needed to to do a shoot, and they're like, we got to use an unedited, like a, we just got to use it a regular mask. We got to do whatever. I don't remember if that was four or five, but. And it's like the 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 face, just the mask in this. I know it's not the same one. It just lacks a lot of the detail. Yeah, that's the mask in yeah. the first two movies. Eyebrows. It does have eyebrows. But it does. Like, have eyebrows. Well, they all it's, have eyebrows. They all have eyebrows, but they're painted white like, in a lot of them. Yeah, but, but this one, they're like brown. It just looks. Weird. And his hair, I, the hair on it looks like it's. It's just been styled. It like it's so weird. He's got like the he's got the weird hairline, and it's kind of just like it's like molded back. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a weird uh, weird choice there. <laughs> but what did you guys think of Halloween Four? I I voiced some of my opinion on it. I thought it was good. It was I mean, right. I thought it was what fun. My Parker said it was fun. I like the hillbilly hoot nannies, like hoot, hoot nanny and shenanigans right. that went on. <laughs> yeah. Which is like, you know, it like you said, they this happens in a later film in a you know slightly different uh, way, but you know, it just it's it was like I liked 
the final, I like Rachel. I like Jamie. I just didn't like what happened to her. It just, it's just one of those kids things that bothers me. I thought they were fine. Like, she wasn't a bad actress. I just hate that she was getting shit on. And, like, literally just cried the whole fucking movie. And I was like, I don't want to see this. Like, why do I want to see this girl literally getting, like, mentally tortured this whole fucking show? Yeah. Yeah, so that was my biggest issue with it. So I'm probably going to come down harder on this movie than I would most of the other ones. Um, I said the Michael mask looked like shit. I thought the actor was fine. I don't think he did anything really standout-ish or any bad way. So. Yeah, like I said, as long as you kind of have the, you know, Michael is <clears throat> very, I don't want to say robotic, but he's very, he stands straight up and he just walks. He never runs. Even though it is a, a movie where he does run at somebody, which is weird. Yeah, we, we have but, a Jason movie like that. Too, yeah, so. so it's uh, it's odd, but yeah, like I said, this movie, I, I have a lot of fun with this movie. It was good to see Michael back. The kills are cool. I like Jamie. I like Rachel. Yes, he was back. I'm back again. <laughs> so do we have anything else we want to add before we move on to the next one? Not really, I don't think, unless you have something to add. No, nothing to add. All right. Well, let's go to our rankings then. So, Mask, I'm guessing this Four. is going to be <laughs> bottom. Uh yeah. Final girl, I'm going to say Lori slash Rachel. We'll group them together in this one because I feel like they play together. Bottom? No, no, no. Like, oh. I think, I, think I, 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 I love Tom Atkins' character, but I like, I like Rachel, and I, I like the synergy she has with Jamie, like the pair of them. We're really good. Dude, listen, I like Tom Atkins. He was just fucking people, dude. He was an awesome guy, like, but he doesn't like... He doesn't fit the final girl role. I mean, it's just like, I know he's obviously not a woman, but like, it's Tom Atkins. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's Tom Atkins. Like, what else are we going to say here? He's, he's too. It's like if somebody came up to me, like, what do you think of Tom, uh, Tommy Jarvis from Friday the 13th part six as the final girl? I'm like, he's not. Yeah. I mean, he's he like, obviously Megan that's with him. I would say is the final girl. But he just, he does it because he, most of the time, he goes toe-to-toe with his adversary. He does right. run some, but same with Tom Gatkins. He was, like, biting motherfuckers, but then sometimes he would run. He just doesn't, he, but, you know, even James, like, the ladies do, but it just doesn't, I don't know. He just doesn't feel like he fits that motif to me, so. So, we're saying he's, uh, we're saying they're better than Chalice, right? Yes, I think. Are they better than Lori in Halloween 2? I'm going to say yes. They do more. They true that it's true that do do more. Do do. <laughs> he said do do. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh poster. Uh I love the H four poster. Really? Okay. I do like I do it's not it's it's not too busy. It's just Michael's mask, yeah, the house behind him. Of course you get the cool slogans. It's like ten years later he changed the face of Halloween. Tonight he's back. <clears throat> I like the mask in this picture better than the one in the. Oh movie. fuck yeah! Because I think that's just a screenshot from the first movie. Like that's the mask from the very first Halloween. So this, that one doesn't it? have brown eyebrows. Listen, don't think of some reason why we can't use that same mask because this is a different one that he sold. No, just make it look like the same mask. I guess but there was I, a lot I, of reasonings I mean, behind why masks didn't look the same throughout the franchise. You know, the fact that they tried to use the same mask for a lot of the movies, but they couldn't get them like the either they deteriorate. They don't last long based on the material that they were using. They That's couldn't true. find the same mask. So they just had to kind of it was more of just, you know, and they wanted to make it look like he was just stealing them from from costume shops. Sense. But when we get um, to. Yeah, when we get to five. Then we're then you can you can ask that question. Like, why is it not the same? <laughs> yes. Uh, I I think it's I think this is better than the Halloween three poster. Okay, I agree. So we'll put it at because I I don't think it's better than H two. I think H I think Halloween and Halloween two have awesome, just simplistically awesome posters. Yes, yes. And then the movie itself, where are we rank in Halloween four? Is it better than Halloween two? I'm not answering that question. But that's the point of this, Dan. We have to rank them. That's I the whole point so. of this episode. I don't think so. Okay, I do think so. 
What do you think, dear? And make your own decision, Angela. You we you got this. <sighs> Don't be afraid to make somebody angry. If you make Parker angry, he's just gonna replace you. <laughs> yeah. He likes me better though. <laughs> You didn't hear him object to it. No, absolutely. I'm not saying, I'm not nothing. saying anything. I, okay. I know where I sit in this toad. I'm not there. saying nothing. <laughs> I'm. <sighs> Damn it. Did you like it more than Halloween 3? Well, yeah. Well, th- well, Halloween 2 is our third movie. But he's, so we're asking he's, is it better than Halloween 2? 2, two yeah, not 3. I mean, then that's up to you. Is it better than Halloween 2? We have to go based on our rankings, our as our collective rankings. That's true. I'm gonna say it just barely edges out two. All right, there we go. That's all we needed. Is that? Do you think it's better than Halloween three? Well, yeah. See, that's just because. See, that's a thing, just because though. Because I am a, I, I still stand behind. I don't think it should have been considered. I know why it should have been considered part be there. of the franchise. Yeah, I know it's always going to oh. be there because it is Halloween. But people, I think people it, will dismantle us if we didn't. I know. I do you think I care? <laughs> I Halloween, don't care. Halloween three should just be called Doctor Chalice is not in the town. But <laughs> here, here's the thing: there has been other movies that we've watched that have been, you know, collected in that franchise. And I think they only were there in name only. Not that's how they got there. Okay, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Well, so, so well since we determined Dan that the, that a, I know Halloween it's Four be is better there. than Halloween Two, do you think Halloween Four is better than Halloween Three? Absolutely not. All right, so we will put. That's got to be. You don't. But you I guys don't voted care. the same though. Did I? Did I say I that Halloween know. Four was better than Halloween Three? I don't know. I assume you so. Like Halloween three better, I thought. I like Halloween three a lot. I, I think See, it's I'm a fun. Winning, and I'm not. I'm and not I'm not trying to like one. join some bandwagon of like all the people who finally like were like, ah, oh, Halloween three is way better than I remember. No, I just it, I thoroughly enjoy the story behind Halloween three. So Listen, Halloween four is going to be our number three as okay. of right now. Well, th- this line in the sand. I watched Halloween three and enjoyed Halloween three before we got together, and that was nineteen years ago. 20 years ago, I watched that movie. So that's where I stand. Like you said, people joined the bandwagon. And I just watched this. <laughs> if you if, if you would have warned me more other than saying it's different, I probably wouldn't have been so angry with it. Okay. Well, at least it gave you that opinion, though. Like, it gave you an honest opinion. I didn't get it. And I would watch it again <laughs> and not call it Halloween 3. <laughs> All right. Alice's night on the town. The affairs of Dr. Town. All right. We are now on to Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. This movie was directed by Dominique Olfanin Gerard. Whew. That's a name. That's a $5 name right there. Looking at his, uh, looking through his filmography, the only thing I recognize is the Omen 4, The Awakening. Oh, boy. You kind of know what you're getting into here, guys. This movie was written by Michael Jacobs, also by Dominique Olfenin Gerard and Shem Bitterman. Uh, it stars Donald Pleasance back as Sam Loomis. We have Daniel Harris back as Jamie Lloyd. We have Ellie Cornell back as Rachel. We have Bo Starr as Sheriff Ben Meeker, who I believe he played him in the fourth one as well. We have Wendy Kaplan as Tina. Tina! I love Tina. I I will get to Tina. I fucking love Tina. Oh, man. And Don Shanks plays Michael Myers and the man in black, which is a character that uh, makes his first appearance in this movie. Uh, The music was also done by Alan Howarth Howarth again. It was released October 13th, 1989, almost a year after the fourth one ran at 96 minutes with a $5.5 million budget. So the budget just keeps on going up and with Every with every installment, we're getting a higher budget, and it only made eleven point six million dollars at the box office. So this movie, well, actually, let's read the IMDb <laughs> summary here. One year after the events of Halloween Four: The Return of Michael Myers, 
the shape returns to Haddonfield once again in an attempt to kill his now mute niece. Is that relevant? Uh, I don't know. To him killing her that she gets. I I don't. Okay. Know. So, yeah, this movie. <laughs> this movie. This is such a fall from grace from Halloween Four, in my opinion. It's just so much wrong with this movie. Of course, this is when you really get the more of that cult of thorn bullshit that they introduce. You get that, of course, you get the man in black who like wanders around the town. Of course, he's the one who ends up freeing Michael at the end after he gets arrested. Um, I do like the whole beginning, though, where Michael, the whole thing where he falls into the well. And originally in four, he was supposed to die. But then in this one, he just goes into the river and floats downstream and runs into a dude who lives in a shack down by the river. That's got a bird. Yes, he does. And then Michael just ends up killing him. And. Jamie, just they made her mute. I don't like that decision at all. And she did because she didn't kill her mom. Yeah, she didn't kill her mom, uh, but she is in a a wellness center type thing. Like they're monitoring her because she's going through some PTSD stuff where she is having flashbacks. She is. And, and this is where you get uh, this whole like side plot where Jamie is like connected to Michael in some like weird telekinesis type thing or yeah. it's so weird. I, I the, like I said, the fact that they made Jamie Mew uh just was awful. They kill off Rachel. Oh, I which, hate that so much. Sucked. It was such a lame way to go out. Uh so they kind of made Tina the new Rachel. And don't get me wrong, she is not Rachel. Rachel was a great character. I think they wrote her really well in four. I like the relationship between her and Jamie. And they tried to get that relationship with Tina once Rachel was eliminated. And it just didn't feel the same, even though I love super forced. Yes. I, but to be honest, every time Tina was on screen, I'm like, Tina, fucking Tina. Love it. (laughs) Her shitty boyfriend. Who's also named Michael. (laughs) Dude, I had, the complete opposite reaction to her being on screen. I'm just like, uh, why do I give a shit about this lady? I don't know. Maybe it could have just for me. It just could have been. She's very attractive. That's fair. <laughs> she's very attractive. And I was just like, all right, <laughs> what is she doing? A lot of dumb shit. All right. I feel like that's kind of what every character in this movie is doing. Just a bunch of dumb shit. <laughs> yeah, that's you true. Have, you also have Loomis just, deeper into his just psychosis like this man has just lost his mind he is of course he like i love when he goes to the, uh, the he goes to the police station he's showing the sheriff his like burnt up arm and face he's like it blew up with him i fired michael's evil and like oh jesus christ like, this guy again it. calm the fuck down Good we, God. we forgot to mention that michael like kills the entire police force in the last one yes <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and so we just have a bunch of brand new ones in this new one, except for the sheriff, who's still alive. Yeah, we just, we just, we'll find replacements. But again, it. it's uh, it, uh, they play into the first two because the sheriff's daughter dies in the fourth one, and then of course we have to get like the whole thing. It's like my daughter died, blah blah blah, type thing, like with bracket in the second one, and just nothing worked. The mask is awful this is the, oh, one terrible. of the worst masks in this franchise you have the why, why is it so wide on the bottom what's happening down there they didn't trim it up it always looks like his eyes are on his forehead like how does yep. he see in this thing like it's terrible oh man it's just, just stre- getting stretched out and like and brother. like you said loomis totally goes on the deep end, off the deep end and tries to like offer up jamie yeah and like, i have a right here yeah, right here yeah, yeah. come get her I mean, I know it's a trap, but like, it's like, dude, Lumis, you're such a piece of shit. Man. Yeah, you're gonna use a kid as a trap, like bait. But like, the you're whole... not se- ca- catching sexual predators here, dude. Yeah. You're just trying to get this dude. I just wasn't a fan of the supernatural shit, like oh. the whole linking with Michael and 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 Jamie, like the fact like she like senses him and she's like doing crazy drawings and you know f- having the seizures and it's just I don't but... know. This movie's just a mess, like. There's not a like a lot to like about this movie, and can we just we we never have not mentioned at all throughout this franchise the fact that like one of the things I hate about what they did with Michael is the fact that he kills dogs. 
he kills a yes. lot of dogs in this franchise, and that's like yeah, something I feel like a lot of people don't mention. That's like that sucks, them. man. Yeah, he eats them. I love it. Yeah, the first one is like a he he got hungry. <laughs> but um, yeah, just annoying characters. Like ever like mm. like like I said, Tina. I like Tina, but I know she's an annoying character. But it was like there was not a lot of characters in this movie to really be like, I like this guy or I like this. I like this part. Like it just wasn't that like all of the side characters, like the other friends, like the boyfriend and the other girl who bangs her boyfriend in the barn. Just yeah. Why? I don't fucking care. I just don't care. <laughs> and uh, I, to be honest, I don't even remember how this movie ends. How does this movie end? Jay- Jason just casually driving around Jason? In a Camaro. Not Jason. Michael <laughs> yes, casually driving another around thing. Camaro for most of the fucking he movie. He doesn't do anything in this movie. Michael does nothing in this movie. You also get the scene where Jamie is in the coffin and she's like, take, you know, uncle, uncle. And he takes off his, he's about to take off his mask. She's going to touch him and then he like whips it back on and shit happens and yeah, it's just annoying. This is when you find out Rachel's actually dead because you never get like a solid no. answer to that. Yeah, it, this movie's a mess. It's just an absolute mess. I don't even remember how this movie ends, and I just watched it. Like that's how forgettable this oh, movie is. I remember. They end up. Uh, they end up capturing him. Oh, that's right. And the man in black frees him. Yeah, and Jamie blows up the fucking the whole police yeah. station. Just Jamie fucking walks Terminator in and, style and sees the the jail cell all blown up, and that's how it ends. And I just went, oh, okay, that's sure. Cool. Why not, man? <laughs> All right. Thorn, All right. Man. Well, I think, I mean, there's really not a lot to talk about with this movie. This movie is just not good. And I don't, it, it's definitely one that I, I will skip if I had to uh, go through this franchise again. It's just, it's one I just don't enjoy as much. There are certain characters. Like I, like I said, I like Tina. I like watching, she's funny and in an annoying way, but, uh, yeah. Like me, Halloween Five is a mess. Oh, I'm sorry. So let's talk I about. Realize. What did you realize? What? So the the mask in four, you know what it makes me think of? What? Michael Jackson. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I see it. Oh no. You don't have to put that in there, but I'm I like, fuck it. The the whole like thin lips, like you know, most of the masks have like the really pointy top lips, and like he has nothing. Looks like shit. It all looks like so, shit. I scrolled up and I was like, wait a minute. Sorry. So I'm just gonna guess this movie is on the bottom for everything. Yeah. Yes. All right. <laughs> that works for me. Because yeah, I just not a I'm not a fan of this one. No. So so let's move on to Halloween The Curse of Michael Myers or Halloween Six, The Curse of Michael okay. Myers. AKA Scott Lang versus Michael Myers. Yeah. So. Oh, we no, hold on. Uh, I do want to make one thing and we don't have to change the rankings for anything. I actually like the poster for this. Oh, right. Yeah. To yeah, be honest, I actually five like five more sweet. than fours. Po- five's poster is fucking sweet. So now, I would. Go ahead. Uh, do you think it's better than fours? I think it's under two. You, so, yeah. So it'd be 78 H2 and then H5. Yeah, I just think it looks good. Like the shadowing and stuff on his mask with Jamie on the side of the blade and stuff. I just yeah, think no, it no. looks cool. I, I was just yeah. so preoccupied with just going through and putting it at the yeah, bottom yeah. of everything. I was like, oh shit, the poster. I forgot we were well, doing Well, like that. you said, we don't have a lot to say about <laughs> yeah. this movie. So. The, oh. the poster redeems it. Yeah. That's about the, it. The poster looks great. So, after Halloween 5 and his piss poor performance, uh, we didn't get another Halloween movie for uh, six years. We got Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, which was released uh, September 29th, 1995, a few days after my fourth birthday. (laughs) Uh, This movie was directed by Joe Chappelle, who we've talked about before on this show because he was the director of Phantoms. Phantoms, yo. Yeah. Fuck yeah. At least you want to do something good. Uh, This was written by Daniel Farrens. It stars, again, Donald Pleasance in his final role because he actually passed away before this movie was even finished. Uh, they were, And the thing is, originally, I was going to rank... I was going to talk about both movies and rank both movies because there are two versions of this movie. There is the theatrical cut, 
which are where I think I want to focus more on, but I do want to talk about the producer's cut. So we watched the theatrical. So though. the producer's cut had so the reason why a lot of people when they do rankings of these movies, they separate the theatrical and the producer's cut of this one because of the fact that it is drastically different. So in the theatrical cut, which is the version you guys watched, I watched both, but it wasn't necessary. It, it ends with Michael squaring off with Paul Rudd and uh, uh, I can't remember what the other characters' names were. <clears throat> and they square off in this like weird furnace room. And then that's not the one we watched. Then what? How did yours end? With the runes. Where he does the runes around him and he gets trapped. He's like when yeah. Loomis walks back in and it, yeah. he's laying down. Yeah. That's technically the producer's cut. That's the how fuck? the producer cut it. It because okay. it because okay. no because your version did it have it where when oh, what the hell is her name? Uh, when Kara uh, gets captured, she gets put on the slab, the rock slab, and everybody's yeah. standing. Yeah. That's technically the producer's cut. Okay, then we watched the. Okay, that's what we watched. <laughs> Because the theatrical cut literally ends with, like, Michael, there's, like, the Cult of Thorn, like, plot line is kind of just completely thrown out the window. Because you have, you find out that Dr. Wynn is the he- is the man in black, and he is, like, the head of the Cult of Thorn. Yeah. And they're going to do, they're doing an operation, he's doing an operation with a bunch of doctors, and Michael just walks in and just s- murders them all. And then Michael squares off with Paul Rudd and Cara, uh, Cara Strode in this room and they defeat him and then the movie ends with a shot of his mask on the ground. Okay. But the producer's cut ends with the whole rune thing and then of course Dr. Wynn has the mask and Michael changes to the man in black, right? And walks out. And Loomis does the... Uh, yeah, because he's got the oh, rune on his... Arm. Yeah, he's got yeah. the rune on his on his arm. Yeah. yeah, that's what we watched. Jesus. I was like, runes, okay. Yeah, this this movie, Ink. I gotta say, though, I actually really enjoyed watching this movie. Like, I thought this movie was pretty good. I like the beginning. Like, I like like how it was building in the yeah. beginning. Because in your version, does Jamie survive and then get killed in the hospital? Yeah. She's like, she escapes. So in the... In and the then- yeah, okay. The theatrical cut, <laughs> she gets... she. She goes to that train station and then she drives back and she's at like this barn and Michael finds her in the barn and throws her on like a piece of equipment that's like this blade, this thing that spins okay. and then turns it on and it like tears her up and oh. kills her. Yeah, she dies in the hospital because she gets taken to the hospital. Yeah, and, all yeah, and then she damage. gets she gets shot by the man in black. Yeah, because nobody's going to hear that. Jesus Christ. Yeah, but this I mean. I, I like the producer's cut better because of the fact that it actually plays in. If you're gonna if you're gonna do this cult of thorn shit, you might as well you got to keep going with it. You can't just you can't just abandon it. I think that's what the theatrical cut did. They abandoned that whole thing, and it just made no sense. Where the producer's cut gives you the whole runes thing, it gives you the whole thing where they have to sacrifice Kara and transfer the evil over to her son because he's gonna be the next Michael Myers, and it's a whole weird thing. But uh. I actually enjoyed this movie. I thought it was fun. I thought, to be honest, Paul Rudd's performance is just so weird, but I I really liked it. And this was a better performance for Loomis, even though, unfortunately, this yeah, he was like really sick at this time. He, like I said, he passed away uh, shortly after they finished filming the theatrical uh, version of the movie because uh, I know they when they did reshoots, they had to kind of film around him because he he died. Yeah. That's fair. So, I, yeah. Paul Rudd was kind of a shitty pervert. Tommy yeah, Doyle. It was, it was weird. Yeah, oh, yeah, he, yeah, we forgot to mention, he plays Tommy Doyle in this, which is just odd. Um, um, and then but, Jay, uh, Jason, I keep wanting to say it, Michael, Michael being the father of Jamie's baby. Of Jamie's yeah, baby. That was weird. Fucking weird, yeah, dude. Yeah, was very weird. And then the uh, room thing, they like yeah. really leaned it, which we got some of that in Halloween 3, and they allude to it in Halloween 2. And then they like really lean for lean to it in the producer's cut of this. Uh Kara's wow. dad fucking sucked. Dude, what is a worst character one dude. of the worst characters in this franchise. Not just this oh, movie, yeah. in the franchise. This guy fucking sucked. The, 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 when, when the mom is trying to like talk to him about shit, and and he's like, You you know, you gotta stop being like this. She's your daughter. And he's like, 
she's not my daughter anymore. And I went, what the fuck, bro? Like, that's, you suck, man. This movie just went to 11, like, on some things, like, really quick. <laughs> he also dies differently in both versions. So you, in your version, he just gets electrocuted, right? Yeah. In the theatrical cut, he gets electrocuted to the point he blows up. Like he, okay. he, he, he fucking blows up. I can't say go back and just it. watch that scene. If you can find it, it. Yeah, you could, it's probably easier to find the theatrical cut, but I was like, wow, I figured they would do the very dramatic part. I don't know. It was crazy. Uh, I like the kills in this movie. I think the kills are better in this movie than in five. I mean, five kind of just was just, ugh. Uh, the mask is good, right? We like the mask yeah, in this better. one. It looks, looks it, it, a huge improvement from five. Yeah. Uh, I like, you know, the, I think the, the the actor who plays Michael uh, does a, 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 a better job than I think we got in the last one. Uh, George P. Wilbur actually came back to play Michael. Uh, he played him in part four. Oh, okay. So. Uh, I do love the whole, the whole Mrs. Blankenship shit, how she's involved with the cult and stuff. Oh, God. <laughs> oh that's great so going through the cast we have donald pleasance back uh for one final film as dr sam loomis we have paul rudd as tommy doyle he's credited as paul stephen rudd in the credits uh we have marion uh, hagan as kara strode mitch ryan as dr terrence Wynn, uh devin gardner as danny strode and jc brady as jamie lloyd and so Ed, what do, we got anything else we want to talk about with uh, Halloween 6? More weird mental influence, or like the man in black is like influencing the boy, like you must kill. For yeah, him. yeah. I do like the scene, though, where Kara and her dad are going at it, and he and it's like he looks down, and the knife is like right at his stomach. Like the kids yeah. can't do it, and it's kind of the whole thing where he like backs away. Because the dad, like, they, I feel like they wrote a lot of the characters in this movie pretty well. Like, I, I gotta say, the character development is pretty good. I like how some of the like the dialogue isn't like completely trash uh but god the dad sucked like everything that comes out of this dude's mouth is just the worst and and, and yes like make him a shitty character but like it's just so far out there like for one they never tell us what she did what did she do did, yeah. is it because she came home like she got pregnant and had a kid maybe i, I just i'm confused because he like hates her like he despises his own daughter for something she, like clearly she's not a complete piece of shit because she's she's taking care of her kid uh she's going back to school she's working like she's doing things like if if my kid came like you know if one of my kid you know once they get older and something happens they have to come home and they got a kid and it's like hey I, I need to do this shit you know in order to get back on my feet but like yeah i'm not gonna fucking and, and i'm not gonna treat like a piece of shit like this guy just Wait. sucks also, uh, Barry Sims, another character who just sucks too. The the radio DJ guy, the shock jock, yeah, the yeah, shock jock. Him. He just he was he dies by getting in the wrong fucking band. Yeah. I, so I just stupid. love the the. Oh, it's red. Why is it red? It's warm. And she's getting yeah. rained on from his blood. Oh uh, yeah. All right. Well, I don't know. I got nothing else to say about uh, about this one other than the fact that I liked it way more than I thought I was. Dear, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't because the whole the whole cult of Thorn was weird I, I, it was no it I, was agree. Very, I agree I agree it was it was a stupid it was a just a a weird decision to, to include a cult like because they're trying to find a way of like why is Michael the way he is let's introduce yeah. this weird supernatural cult oh. thing and it's like oh okay I was finding the little babies at the park earlier Oh, <laughs> somebody, somebody must have had um, a baby shower or something. And we found these little plastic babies, little tiny plastic babies. And my daughter is like, oh, what are those? And he called them baby seeds. She carried these things. She still has them. She carried them around. But she also found like little tiny um, uh, like clo clothes pins. Clothes pins, yes. Oh, that's cool. And she put them on the babies and she put them in like the little holes of the tables at the park. Mm -hmm. I said, all you have to do is just put that little symbol. <laughs> oh, the thorn symbol. The thorn yeah. symbol <laughs> on them. 
I told me I told it reminded me of Tremors or uh, Deep Rising because they're like getting pulled That's into funny. the table. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, it, it, it was just it was just strange. I guess. No. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I'm just gonna reiterate what I said when four hit. This is just diminishing returns for me, and I was not a fan of this movie. Uh, Paul Rudd's probably the best part of it. <laughs> um, and even then, I didn't. His character was kind of shitty. It was, of course, young, very young Paul Rudd. So it's fair. Mm-hmm. This was his and first film. That, that, yeah. that doesn't surprise yeah. me. Uh, other than that, like I mean, Loomis was okay. He wasn't as bad as he was in Five. He wasn't just like a flat out villain, and he got like cosmetic surgery. Yep, like, oh, and he I even know. explains it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, it's this. This one didn't do it for me either. I didn't care for the mysticism and stuff that was added to it, which, is, I mean, at least this is the version we watched and it just kept going with the Thorn thing. But, like, the end of it, it's just like, ah, you're in, you're in the rooms, bitch. Yeah, he's just like, laying no, there. not my master <laughs> anymore. Like, I love where he's just standing there at first and then the, it, take, it, like, cuts and then goes back and he's just laying there. <laughs> Get up, bitch. Yeah. I'm do some work. Uh, my favorite line from Loomis in this movie was when uh, that shock jock guy is talking on the when Barry Sims is talking on the radio and he's just like, oh, I wonder where that Loomis uh, Loomis guy is. I heard he's dead. And he's like, not dead. Just very much retired. Yeah, right. <laughs> not that I blame the guy. Yeah. He's living in like this awesome cottage like out in yeah. the middle of nowhere. It's perfect. He's like fucking loving it. Yeah. He's like, I got better. It's fine. All right. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's put this on the rankings. Let's start off with Mask. Where are we ranking this one? It's clearly better than five. Oh, oh God, yeah. Is it better and than four? In four, okay. Is I it think. better than the mass in Season of the Witch? I think so. Because oh. this, this feels like a more return, like a, a return to form, like more like the original stuff. I think it's a good mask. I think it hits the points it needs to. It doesn't look too awful weird. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, fucking way better than four or five. And like I said, I still like the my thing for my reason for this. I'm gonna say this for all of them. I like Season of the Witch, but the masks just aren't iconic enough. Yeah, it's like Friday the Thirteenth. I like Baghead Jason, but I love the hockey mask one better because that's the hockey mask. Right, I mean, right. It's it's more iconic. Yeah, <clears throat> he got some lips going on though. Yeah, he does. Wait till fucking they are very like pointy. Damn, son, got that Botox. <laughs> All right, uh, final girl slash person. Where are we? What do we say? Tommy Doyle or Kara? I don't give a shit about either of them. Are we putting them below Jamie from Five, or are they better than Jamie from Five? At least Tommy Doyle could talk. I'd say we put them at number five. Uh, That's fine. uh, Let's do it. Yep, let's do it. I know we're getting real bad indecisive answers, but we're going with it. All right, so Tommy slash Kara. Keeping Tom slash underage, like uh, young mother. Not underage, but young Jamie, mother. age five. Uh, poster. I don't like the poster. This very, it's it's nothing special. Eh, it's not. It's like, let's take a picture with the knife, but put a blue filter on yeah. it. I, I'm gonna, Perfect. I, I think it belongs on the bottom. Yep. Read. Uh, and movie. Is it, It's better than age five? I'm going to leave this between you guys. I think these just movies just got worse from four. Like, it was just downhill the whole way for me. The only thing I would say, the only, um, I guess, redeeming quality of this is I like how it opened. Because mm-hmm. it seemed like something interesting would happen, but it very quickly fell on its face for me. I'm going to say it's better than H5. I think H5 is going to be on the bottom for a while. What do you think? What do you think dude? I'll agree with Parker. I don't think it's better than Halloween 2, though. All right. Well, there we go. Our list is updated. So now we move on to the seventh film in the franchise, and that is 1998's Halloween H2O, 20 years later. Water. This movie was directed by Steve Miner, who we've talked about a few times on the show because he has directed. uh, uh, He directed a couple of the Friday the 13th films. He also directed like Placid. Yes. And which was like a year apart because this came out in 98 and like Plastic came out in 99. So pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Steve Biner was a busy man. 
Uh, this was during the Scream era, of course, so this movie very yes. much feels like it's in that time. Kevin Williamson, who wrote the Scream movies, at least most of them, except for three and the newer ones, uh, he has an, he's uncredited as a writer on this. Interesting. But it was mainly written by Robert Zappia. Uh, it stars Jamie Lee Curtis back again as Laurie Strode. Uh, but she has she goes by a different name because she is uh, she goes into hiding. She's trying to escape the events of the yes. night twenty years before. So her name is Carrie Tate. We have Josh Hartnett as yep. John Tate, her son, and everybody's like, "Oh my god, he had a, that crazy haircut and this and the faculty." Yeah, because they were filmed like literally back to back, so he didn't change his haircut. So that's why. We have Adam Arkin as Will Brennan, who he's also in Lake Placid, but he's in a very small role. He's the one who plays the shitty boyfriend in the beginning. To uh, uh, Yeah, yeah. We were it? talking yeah. about that. We have Michelle Williams, which I think this was like one of her first roles. Uh, she played Molly. Uh, Michelle Williams, she's been in a bunch of stuff. She oh. was in the Fablemans re- most recently. We have Adam Han Baird as Charlie Devenaugh. He was in Jumanji. He played the young... Uh, uh, the he, the younger version of Robin Williams in that movie. Uh, Jody Lynn O'Keefe, who played Sarah, who is the boyfriend or the, the boyfriend, the girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> we have Janet Lee as Norma. I love in uh, the, there was one scene where she's next to the car, which is the same car she drives in Psycho, which yeah, is really cool. Uh, God, what did I said it was fifty seven Ford four door. I think it was yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it Pretty plays it, it. If you listen, it plays the Psycho theme. Like really? it plays like some music from Psycho, not the Psycho theme, not that. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean. Uh, LL Cool J as Ronnie. Good old Ronnie. Michael Myers is played by Chris Durand. Uh, Nancy Stevens comes back to play Marion Chambers. Yeah. Joseph Gordon Levitt's in this movie as Jimmy. Yeah. Of course, he's not in it for very long. Uh, he took a career quickly after this, start writing Halloween music. I got to mention Matt Winston, who plays, he plays a cop in the beginning of this. He's the one who kind of talks about the whole Michael Myers, Laurie Strode thing. Uh, He is the son of Stan Winston. We've talked about him on our Patreon show out of the two, because he was in Harbinger (laughs) down. That's right. Mm -hmm. I told you that. Thank you. So Halloween H2O was uh, the music was done by John Ottman. And Marco Beltrami, who also did the music for the most of the Scream movies. It was released July 27th, 1998 in uh, L.A. and August 5th, 1998 in the U.S. This was the first uh, Halloween movie not to be released in September or October. It ran at 86 minutes. It's fucking like these movies just keep getting shorter. Yeah. But it got this and this one had the biggest budget of any Halloween film at 17 million dollars but it made 75 million dollars I guarantee the reason behind that was because Jamie Lee Curtis was back She's yep back. so Halloween h2o let's uh let's see what IMDB has for an awesome little it's awesome little quip thing here oh excuse me I tried Uh, Lori Strode, now the dean of a Northern California private school with an assumed name, must battle the shape one last time as the life of her own son hangs in the balance. No. So what did we think of Halloween H2O? I remember people talking about this movie a lot when it came out. My relatives specifically. And while I did enjoy this movie, uh, it had a really weird flow to it for me. Like where I, you're watching the movie and you're getting all this stuff in the beginning, mm-hmm. and you get little sprinklings of Michael. Yeah, and then it just kind of happens, and then it's the rest yeah. of the movie. You don't get a lot of Michael in this movie. It's a lot of no. her like imagining him or him off doing something else or just him. Just it's mostly just him stalking. Yeah, and it's not her. even like yeah. you don't even get like this one big event, and he's in the movie. It's just kind of like he's in, and then he's there for the movie. If that you, makes sense. That's how it yeah. felt to me. Because when like, he, it wasn't like this magic like transition from the stalking period to not doing anything to him being there and actually killing and being a threat. It's just kind of right. And he's pretty brutal in this one. Like I feel like he's yeah. more physical. Um, the biggest issue I had with this movie, and I think it's something that's been mentioned a lot when this franchise is talked about, or even this movie, just is the masks. Whew. 
messy, just yeah. messy mass. The, it, it, there were multiple masks done uh, for this film. You have physical masks. You also have shots of CGI mask. It's just odd. It's just out of place. Also, the eye holes are huge. <laughs> yes. And so you really see his eyes. And I feel Michael Myers, I think what makes him terrifying is the fact is like, when you look at him, like you can see his eyes, but if it's like shrouded in darkness, it just makes it more terrifying instead of it's just like beaming eyes, just like, hi, <laughs> I'm Michael yeah. Myers. It's like, it's just, it's just weird. It's like when I put on this mask, <laughs> that's what the H2O, that's H2O Michael well, Myers looks it, like. It's like you said, it's the shots. They show his eyes way too fucking much. Yeah. It's too, too, too many close up shots. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck they're doing, but I, I also, even though I know you did, um, I kind of refer to this guy a little bit as like Sleepy Mike. And the reason I call him that is is I, I think, like you said, some of the kills are pretty good. But there's also times where he's doing stuff where he just seems like he's just barking about. It's mm-hmm. like that. I, I hate to bring this fucking reference up. It's like the. I don't remember what shot it is in, in uh, Friday 13th Part 3 where Jason just kind of like walks on that dock, shoots that arrow. Oh, da, 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 da. Like he's got no one, <laughs> nothing in the world to trouble him, like, and like this is how the guy faster? comes off. Yeah, and the, and the actor that plays him, as I know in this movie's continuity, he's like supposed to be like similar to another reboot we're going to get to, or, or requel we're going to get to. <laughs> is um, I know he's been like sedated or put up or somewhere for the last however many years since Halloween two, and. But he just seems so small. He doesn't. Yeah, seem the like stature an of the actor figure. they got was just not yeah. as imposing. I guess I should say. And it may not be the Michaels. guy himself. It may have just been the way it was shot. But he just doesn't yeah. look imposing in some of his. He don't don't mind you. He's got some cool shots. Like I like when he lowers down from the pipe. Oh, one that's arm. a great that's shot. That's fucking cool. Great shot. Or he's fl- flipping over the tables and shit. That looks good. But oh. there's just some shots that just he just looks mopey. And I'm like, why'd you do that to him, man? He always looks like he's sleeping, like he's he's really tired. Yeah. He's like, he's like, you try lifting dudes up with one arm. Like when he kills the boyfriend, when he kills Lori's boyfriend. Yeah. And it's the, I can't remember what he's, it's, does he just stab him with a knife and just pick him up? I think so. Yeah, and, yeah. And From you behind. get the whole like convulsing thing, which I love that death scene. Yeah. I think it's a really cool uh <laughs> Really cool death scene. I love the opening of this movie. I love the whole Marion Chambers thing and uh, the kids yes. going in there and then her discovering the kid's dead. You know, the kid with the freaking ice skate in his face. And yeah. it's yeah. really cool. The, and the way that she the dies and the door, cops are, yeah, the cops yeah. don't hear her. And I, I think this movie is well structured to the fact that it's not just Michael going around killing a bunch of people. It's, it's the psychological effects of what Lori went through in those first two movies where she is dealing with a lot. Like the fact is it's been 20 years and she is still dealing with the effects of that single night. Also the fact that this is in the timeline where Michael is her brother. So we, we have to play more into that. Uh, It doesn't really, I mean, you you get it mentioned uh, more and I think it, it, I think it plays well into the finale of the movie, the whole thing where, you know, Lori, uh, is you know she tells her son who got attacked and and the girlfriend to you know they go away and she turns around and shuts the gate and if she's gonna go confront him even though she gets her ass whooped you know she yeah. still is gonna go confront him and you know I think the whole ending of this movie is really fun um you know Michael you know chasing her and the whole pinning them against the thing and then of course the whole you know oh, touch my hand, touch my hand, and then she freaking cuts his head off. And it, I, to be honest, I feel like that would have been a perfect way to just end the character. Like, 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 give her her peace. Like, she killed her boogeyman, and now we're done. But the problem was is that Mustafa Akkad already had a sequel in mind. Yep. So... I could tell by the way that movie ended, and I know what was, what's leading into, the way that movie ended. I didn't say none to her until after we watched resurrection yeah but what happens in that ending i was like there's no way he did not have that shit fucking planned before this movie was finished yeah but uh yeah i think jb lee curtis's performance is the best of the like the best in the franchise as as, as, up to this point yeah yeah. i I think her dealing of course like she's playing an alcoholic 
you know, she's playing somebody who is dealing with this trauma and she does it, she portrays it really well on screen. And, you know, I like all the side, I, to be honest, I like the side characters. I like Josh Harnett. I, mm-hmm. I, you know, he's, he's acting like a teenager, you know, and he's, he's charming. And the fact that he is, he is playing a character who is sheltered because she, she won't let him go anywhere because she's afraid kind of, something's going to happen and he confronts her. And it's like, I feel like that's how it would be. I feel like that's how you would have to confront somebody who is, uh, even if it's your parent, you know, treating you like that, you know, when it's like, no, you're, you, this is on you. Like I, you got to let me live because this is not going to end well for me. If you don't, you know, let me do things. Yeah. And he's like there to take care of her when she has an episode, he's got yeah. to get her medication and stuff for yeah. him. Yeah, exactly. Uh yeah, I, there wasn't there, there. really wasn't a character. I was like, ah, man, that character sucks. Like even Ronnie. Ronnie was one of those characters that, that didn't really need to even be in this movie. Like I think LL Cool J's character was just kind of put in there just to be there. But he still was fine. Like yeah. I still liked his character. I yeah. like the whole thing where he's like trying to talk his wife into letting him write romantic novels. And <laughs> it's, she's it's like shit on him. But then later in the movie, she's kind of going along with it. It's, so, it's entertaining. I guess there's a cut of the movie where he does die. Like when he gets shot, he's just dead. He just that's really it. yeah. Interesting. So I guess they don't want to be that bleak about it. Yeah, but ultimately, I've always had fun with this movie. It's always been one of my favorites to watch when I do go through the Halloween movies. Uh, I think this the performances are fun. The only downfalls I, the only negatives I think I have is just the mask. I just don't like the masks in this movie. They're just ugh, they just don't look good. And I can agree with Dan the fact that like this Michael just doesn't seem as imposing as other Michaels we see in this franchise. Angela, you got anything to add? It feels like a '90s movie. Oh no. God! Oh, absolutely. It, it, absolutely. It's definitely like for it being my first time. I'm like, man, they got all the '90s actors in <laughs> acted in this one. Uh, so you know, I had fun with it just because it it had that feel to it. Oh yeah, I made agree. me feel like a teenager again. All right. Well, uh, I think I think that's about it. There's really not much more to talk about with this one. So let's go to our rankings. Where are we putting the masks for H two O? This is a doozy for me. I don't. I mean, it's it's low. Like it's low, but I don't know how low. And the CG one just really gets to me. I I think five needs to stay at the bottom. Okay. Five is just that's atrocious. I agree. I would say it's right above five. Okay. I just don't like these masks. I don't blame you. I can feel that one. Final girl. And it's gonna be Lori, of course. Yeah, I mean Um Better than Jamie from Halloween Five. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I feel you guys can agree to that. Uh Tommy and Kara from part six can agree mm-hmm. to that. Chalice in part four. Or uh in part three, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Lori in Halloween two. All right. Yeah. Rachel and Jamie from Halloween four. I think so. All right. Well, the only other one would be Lori from part one. <sighs> I think she does a better job because it builds off of her character from that first one and everything that happened. It's up to you guys. I can, no, I, I, I to be it. honest, I feel she is better than Lori from Halloween one. Because she's got more to build on. She's got her kid to worry about. She's got all those emotional problems. Mm-hmm. She's got a relationship, her work, uh, her, you know, uh, you know, double life essentially, or well, you know, change of her name, not double life, but you know, I, there's a lot more going on with her character, and it seems just well written, like how they handle it. Oh yeah, but she's also I had agree. that many many more years of acting, so she yeah. plays it way better. She did True Lies. Mm-hmm. She <laughs> did. All right. Well, we have her now as our new number one. Now on to poster. Nothing special about this poster. It's a generic. No, it's a generic nineties. Uh, 90s 90s getting everybody. Like cast yeah, it's it's nothing special. Do we put this on the bottom though, or is it better than part six? Is it better than part six? Blue mask. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's fine. I just is don't it, like the blue mask. Is it better than part three? Mm, no. Okay. I still feel it's just the generic or these was this people actually, you know, it was this their look in the movie. (laughs) All right. So now it is, it'll be our new number six and now it is for the movie. We got to rank the movie now better than H five. 
Definitely going to yep. agree to that. Better than H6. Yep. Better than H2. Yep. Better than H4. I think so. Better than H3. I'll let you guys take it from here. That's as high as I'm taking it. But that's the thing. It's like, you this have is where to, it gets... You have to put... You have no, to that, contribute that, to a, this. I did. This is my contribution. I don't think it's better than Halloween 3, oh, in my okay. opinion. All right. Like, this is... A, like, it's below Halloween 3 to me, but better than all the other ones. That Angela, is this ones. better than Halloween 3? No. I'll, I'll agree. Let's... But it's 90s. It's got heart in it hair. <laughs> Just messing with it. At least he wasn't snorting fucking caffeine pills out of pens. <laughs> even though even though I fucking love The Faculty. The so. Faculty is so good. All right. I think Faculty is a better movie than this. That's just me. Our rankings are updated. Now it's time to move on to one of our favorites. 2002's Halloween Resurrection. The tagline should have just been trick or treat. Trick or treat, motherfucker. Treat, motherfucker. Yes. <laughs> when that happened in the movie, I said it's the best line for the whole fucking oh, movie. Oh, right God, here. this fucking movie. <laughs> Oh, so man. this movie was directed by Rick Rosenthal. What? The same man who directed Halloween 2. Screenplay oh, was done happened? by Larry Brand and Shane <laughs> uh, Sean Hood. It stars Busta Rhymes. Fuck. Top bill. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, he is literally the top billing of this movie. It's fucking wild. Uh, Bianca Carl Kajic as Sarah. Our, uh, Michael Myers is played by Brad Laurie. We have Sean Patrick Thomas as Rudy. Daisy McCracken as Donna. I don't even know who the hell that was. Get who McCracken. was Donna? Uh, was that one? Of, was that the one who uh, whips out her boobies in the basement? Was that Donna? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. It's right. the red haired girl that fucks in a torture chamber. Yep. And then Katie Sackhoff as Jennifer. Katie Sackhoff from uh, Mandalorian, uh, Battlestar Galactica. Oh, Thomas Ian Nichols from American Pie as Bill. Yes. Uh, Tara Banks as Nora. And uh, oh, Rick Rosenthal plays <clears throat> Professor Mixter, who is the professor in the beginning of this movie. Oh, okay. I mean, okay. You get yourself in there somehow. Named after the doctor from Halloween, too. Okay. So this movie, uh, music done by Danny Lux, uh, released July 12th, 2002. 90 minute runtime, $15 million budget, $37.6 million box office. Who the fuck picked the soundtrack for this movie? I don't know, but this movie is rough. Even after this oh, rewatch, there, and listen, I don't think it's as terrible as I remember it or as terrible as most of the internet talks about, but there's just a lot of just weird decisions. You know, it's like mostly it's dialogue. Um, I mean, I, to be honest, I don't hate the whole opening with Lori you know, finally getting killed by Michael. But it just doesn't make sense because once Lori dies, isn't that kind of the whole point of him killing her is like, that's it. Like he's just supposed to kill his family and then that's it. But I, I feel like the only reason this movie happens is because they're in his house. Yeah. Like the only reason he kills all these people is because he, they're in his house. I feel like he was just going to go to his house, lay down and just die. Like that was like, it. Guys, what the fuck are you doing in my house? I'm trying to sleep. So yeah, this is a, of course, a, a movie that plays into the whole reality TV part of like uh, uh, the world. That's what the world was turning into uh, was all this, you know, reality TV going on. So they were like, Hey, what if we do that? But with Michael Myers and it's like, uh, okay. So yeah, you get the, the opening is really cool. I actually like the opening where Michael goes to the, uh, to the sanitarium and confronts Lori. You get the whole confrontation with uh, with her and him fighting, and then of course he gets the upper hand and finally kills her. And I like the whole kiss before she says like Happy Halloween, and then oh no, I she says that. See you in hell. Yeah. Uh, I hated that. I was like, Why? Why kiss him? I don't know. It's your brother. It's yeah. fucking weird. I'm just whatever. But. Ew. The the this movie is just Michael just going around and killing these people while they're recording everything because it's part of this reality show. And you get this whole thing where you got this dude on the outside who's like helping the one girl, the main girl in the movie, and then you got the Buster Rhymes. text messages things. ever. Text messages don't come through like that, guys. Even yeah. back then. <laughs> it's, no. it's, it's weird. Um Yeah, it's just it's just odd. It's just a it's just a it's an odd 
a, a very odd movie. I I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. I just it was one of those like, oh well, it's over. Thank God, I can move on to the next one. Do you guys oh, have anything man. to add about this? Yes. Um, we just we had a lot. Of, I had a lot of fun laughing at it. Oh God, yeah, like, dude. It was like what the fuck. But okay, listen. There is a scene. I swear to God, Bust is like, I'm only in this movie if you let me talk about martial arts. <laughs> and there's a scene where he gets interrupted watching mar- martial arts, and he won't shut the fuck up about martial arts. It is the most awkwardly acted scene. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? It was, it was in his hotel room, right? Yeah, yeah, I get it. I understand. But he's like, you watch him. He mentions the actor. I don't remember who the fuck it is. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's so hammy. And it fits with the rest of the movie. And I, I didn't care. I mean, it, I, you know, whatever. They're doing something different. All the power to him. But the the danger tainment shit was dumb. And like the the cameraman getting killed while Tyra Banks is there, and you clearly see him, but like he gets stabbed with the pole thing. He's busy making her coffee. Drug drag him off and drops the camera in the corner, and it's just. But anyway, I didn't. It's whatever. It's th- this. I think even as shitty as this movie is, I at least enjoyed watching it more than I did most of four through six. Right. And the very, very end, uh, once the whole we're done with the cameras thing or whatever, for the most part, when they're just actually chased by Michael Myers, there's just a couple of them left, felt kind of like a Halloween movie. Like when they're just being chased around by him, yeah. which was fine. Like that, that part. That's felt what I enjoyed true. about this movie was just yeah. anything inside the house where Michael is actually doing what he's supposed to do. Uh, it just felt it, it was fine. It, it felt fun. I the kills were were OK. You know, nothing special. But uh, also, Michael looked fine. Like, I, I actually like the look of Michael in this movie. Yeah. And but I have other grievances like Michael just being told off by Busta and he just leaves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why? Or 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 like when Bust is just like, all right, this just ties into the dumb martial arts shit from earlier. Just starts doing martial arts on him. Yeah. Because why the fuck not? Yeah. Uh, it's he's I just, what he's learned. It's so fucking hammy, dude. Like this movie is just ham to the max. There's the one shot where it was the dude setting up the cameras and then Michael picks up the the tripod. Yeah, that's what I'm talking he's about. The first slowly kill. walking to I'm like and she gets it's My on God. the camera the whole time and she yeah. sees it like she doesn't see it but it's going but she doesn't see it yeah because she's making coffee <laughs> and then sets the camera down like oh it's a good angle but yeah. you could still see the bottom of the camera but then when it shows that yeah. camera later it's not on the ground tilted up with the legs it's just leaning against the wall yeah yeah like they just set it and let it fall where it okay yeah yeah not much more to talk about with this movie it's pretty it... pretty no. color paint by numbers that's what and i would like say a... Everybody stops at the party just to watch the video. <laughs> Dude's like making out with the girls, about to get some. And oh, what are you watching, man? <laughs> He's like, you guys want to watch this? Like, yeah. Because he's like, they they walk uh, bust through the door, and the dude calls the one guy a pervert. I'm like, he was there. Well, the whole you time. guys okay. came through the door. <laughs> but it was. I will tell you this. It was entertaining to watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it wasn't, uh, I'm not, it's not what I'm going to be like going back to, but like my one viewing, I'm like, all right. I mean, it was dumb. It was dumb most of the time, except like I said, I liked the beginning outside of the kiss part. Just to like, I guess, send her character off. That felt kind of grounded, like. Kiss of death. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, and why, why the fuck did it play like rockabilly music randomly? Like when they're at the party, it's like, this does not fit. <laughs> it does not feel like this fits with this movie, but. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> something. <laughs> yes. All right, so let's rank this, whatever the heck this was. Uh, this let's movie. start off with, of course, we always start off with the mask. I actually didn't hate this mask. I thought it was okay. Uh, it kind of was a, a weird, like, droopy, uh, <laughs> like a, what's that dog? What's that dog? It's droopy like dog. A, yeah, so it just looks like a droopy dog, yeah. But I... I like it better than H2O's. It's very shiny. Well, it wasn't CG half the, or part of the time. So, and it didn't have the like you said the eye holes are smaller too. Yeah. It's just shiny. You, uh so is it better than Halloween 4's mask? That's got to be. At least this this mask has definition. Yeah. Like this like it just looks so flat and just bleh. 
It looks like somebody did a plaster cast of somebody's face four and just and like did nothing else to it. <laughs> it does kind of look like that. eye holes. It does look like that. Uh, okay, is it better than the mask from Halloween three? I think it is. Yeah, like really? I, I'm I'm not. Gonna, I mean, sure. What do you think? I I I really like the mask from Halloween three. I do too. That's, I just, and to be honest, I, I yeah, I think they're I I think they're better than this mask. I'm gonna side with Parker on this okay. one, just because this one looks. I don't know what it is about it, but it just looks strange. This almost look, like this it's looks plastic. It's like it's a hard plastic. It almost looks like yeah, like a hard plastic. Like there's too much definition going on. With okay, it. okay, I see what you're saying. Because it's very like detailed or like around the nose. It has like smile lines. Mm. It has like mm, yeah, like cheeks, like. Cut like cheeks. you can see cheekbones yeah in this it's just like they're trying to make it muscular in space for final girl sarah i'm guessing yeah i guess, I guess. she's very she's wearing her i really wish i wasn't here right now button this whole fucking movie yeah <laughs> like i i, I, I feel her like character she, doesn't want to be there like, i feel legitimately. like i feel like she's bottom for me yes oh god yeah. like she has to be way down there at least I'll put Sarah Resurrection at number Sarah eight. Resurrected. <laughs> uh, the poster for Halloween Resurrection. It's better than H2O's, in my opinion. Yeah, with it's the that knife. same style, but it's in the knife, yeah. and I like the mask, and the evil finds its way home. Um, yeah. So it's going to be our new... Is it better than Halloween 3? No, oh, nah. it's retro. Mm-hmm. Halloween 3 is retro. All right, so Resurrection is... And then movie. Is this better than Halloween 5? I think so. I do too. Is it better than Halloween 6? I don't think so. Okay. I, I'm really indifferent for this movie. I, it was mainly for the ridiculous shit with Busta. <laughs> so that is our new number 7. Alright, well this is going to be the end of part 1 of our Dissecting the Halloween franchise series. Uh... It it's a long one and I hope you all enjoyed thank you so much the next episode will be on the two Rob Zombie films and the David Gordon Green trilogy and that'll complete it all so stay tuned it's coming soon thank you so much for listening thank you to all of our patrons and all of our listeners you guys are amazing make sure to follow us on all the social medias at Dissect That Film and uh, yeah we'll see you all again next time bye <laughs>